good morning, everyone. Welcome to LM Virtual again. You might notice I have a new co-anchor this morning. Peter is fully immersed in uh, a really amazing project with um, this Take Me Home documentary, which Soren and Francis had shared about a few weeks ago. So Susan, in addition to her Leap show, which you'll see today, is joining me. Yeah, hi, everyone. <laughs> Pretty exciting. I've never done anything like this before, so. <laughs> Well, I'm taking a leap. <laughs> yeah. We've got a beautiful lineup of shows for you this morning, starting with Modern Mystics with Andy and Nicholas. And uh, that will be followed by Divine Intervention with Anna and Ken. And following that, there will be Free Your Mind with Laverne. And then Susan Show Leap. And then finally, we'll have a special feature later this afternoon with Jenny and Greg sharing about their David's new upcoming book, This Moment is Your Miracle. So again, welcome everyone, and without further ado, we'll take you over to Andy and Nicholas for Modern Mystics. Because as your heart opens and the vibration of love starts to grow stronger and stronger, you start to recognize them as yourself. I just want to introduce you guys to Nicholas if, if you're new to the show, but here you go. Hi, everyone. <laughs> uh, oh, I see. I see Jackson. I see Charlotte and Mary and John, Tina. Oh, Gemma, Patrick. Oh, that's so sweet to see you guys. <laughs> Marianne. Katrina, I see Jeff. That's sweet. I, I usually didn't get a chance to see everyone like this. So that's sweet. But oh, and Raphael, and oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> hey guys. Well, yeah, yeah. Me and Andy have, have uh, at least since yesterday, have having some beautiful joinings and even this morning and and yeah, it was great when we were talking this morning there was just this um this theme that came up that i wanted to at least start us off with which was uh basically getting off the noodle <laughs> there is uh david has this video which i think is literally called getting off the noodle or or undoing linear time and yeah, I just, I found myself kind of uh, late last night in this upset and it seems to be about comparisons or even thoughts of uh, like I should be different or I should be farther along or I shouldn't be upset about this and, and all of that. And, and my dear, my companion Yuta just had uh, quite a long joining with me late last night. I think it ended around 1 a.m. It was just very sweet. It was very helpful. And just kept kind of walking me through it. And it was just, what I wanted to share was kind of the, yeah, where in my mind, these expectations just take us down. They're like these self-fulfilling prophecies that will just always fail because uh, really none of them are given by the spirit. And I just realized this morning when I was running with Andy, I was like, oh yeah, this is a continuation of this add-on thing I was sharing in my Facebook live. <laughs> yesterday any expectation that i put in time and space and you know myself is is an add-on it's an addition which the spirit hasn't given <laughs> and i could just see the way she would she was walking me through it was you know here i am community i'm at this point and then i think this should happen at this point this should happen at that point you know, this is a whole noodle. This is uh, looking at the horizontal, the time and space. And okay, yeah, this should happen at that time and that time and that time. And, and it has a linear progression. And, you know, it, at each point 
has its meaning. Like everything I see has all the meaning it has for me. So, okay, when I get to this point, I can have this meaning. When I get to that point and this thing happens, I get that meaning. Basically, I get worthiness. And basically here I am over here and these things haven't happened and I'm feeling upset. I'm not feeling worthy. I'm not feeling good. And, and it's just because I've put myself on the timeline. You know, I've allowed add-ons <laughs> again to my mind. When really Jesus is just reminding us that, you know, turn the noodle the other way. Come back to this very moment. Is there actually a problem right now? You know, if you're just here right now with me, that's what Jesus is saying. Is there actually an issue? You know, is there a problem? It's only when you set these expectations on your own, like that you didn't <laughs> join with me on. <laughs> you know, I didn't give them to you. You know, that's kind of the whole issue. Just stay with me right now. That's all that matters. Not a couple months from now, not what happened before, just right here, right now in this moment. And, and yeah, that's, that's as well with what happened. I was sharing this on a Facebook Live because I got all excited with this <laughs> healing I was going through because I had such a contrast experience in my state of mind of, of really kind of stepping away from these add-ons that actually felt very subtle for me. Again, an add-on to me is anything that, you know, I have put in addition to the Spirit's present guidance. You know, the, the, Jesus is telling me, okay, do this. And then my mind goes, okay. And you know what? It would also be helpful. <laughs> you know, it's like you can already feel it. Energy. It's funny. It's like, no, just do only that and trust that it is enough. That's what Kirsten was sharing with me. And it, it's so helpful. It's like, do only that. Just follow the present guidance. And it's, it's enough because it's coming from Jesus. <laughs> he knows time and space. I think, you know, Andy was saying on our very first broadcast, like, and I think it was even the clip that you had shared recently. It's like, okay, Holy Spirit knows all of time and space. And here I am with this limited point of view. Whose judgment should I trust? <laughs> Whose guidance should I trust? Mine? Or all of, you know, the one who sees all of time and space and the greatest good for everything. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, really, it feels like it's a control thing as well. Because it's like, you know, the Course says the script is written. And basically, what we're trying to get to is an experience that this is actually all a movie that we're just watching, that we're just observing. Like, you know, Jesus said, be passers-by. But it's like there's this constant temptation to think that actually I can affect what goes on in the world and I can affect my life and I can tweak things and make it a little better so I can feel happier. And it's like, it's as if I know my own best interests or as if it's even possible to actually change the script, basically, to change something in the world in a way that I want to make me feel better. But actually, like in the Course of Miracles, it says that's impossible. You know, the script is written. I see only the past. And really what um, Jesus is saying is that we're going to be our most happiest at, in a detached state of mind, you know, where we actually, where we're the dreamer of the dream and we're just watching all of life just go by as if it's a movie and we're not so identified with the character that we're looking through this point of view from. And um, yeah, I just, I just know for myself, I want to get into like a consistent experience of that, you know, because I've had glimpses and they're so beautiful and they're so amazing. And then it feels like then this like control thing comes back in and it's like, oh, wait, actually, hold on. Forget about the movie. I know something that I can do to make my life better. Like, <laughs> and then it's like, but it, it never feels good. You know, it's like, it's such a trick. This control thing comes in and it's like, yeah, actually, I can do this. I can do that. I want this and I want that. And that would make me happy. Like as if I can even alter anything um, to suit my needs, as if I even know what I need. You know, it's like, it's all these conclusions and all these assumptions. And really it's like, actually, I have no idea what I want. And it's like the Course says, like, I do not know who I am. I, do, I don't know where I'm going. And um, I don't know what the rest of it is. Something like, <laughs> We don't know anything at all, is what it's saying. 
it's true. Like when we're in that state of mind, like the I don't know mind, it's like that's when we're the happiest. But then when we're trying to control things and it's like, I know who I am, this is me. And I like, I don't know, I like cars, women, money, whatever. I like tech, whatever it might be. And, and it's like, and then thinking that I need those things to make me happy. But really it's like, actually, wait, let me remember that I don't know anything. And that's like, oh, mm. thank God. It's like, I can feel peaceful again. I don't know anything. It's like, let me go back to just watching the movie because my happiness is not going to be in this world. We want to get to a state of mind that's so detached from this world that it's literally like not of this world. You know, Jesus always says like, um, I don't know what he says, something like my kingdom is not of this world. And he's basically talking about at least what I feel like he's talking about is like a state of mind, you know, that's beyond this world. Because the way I see the world in that kind of way is that really the world is another way of saying the ego's thought system. So it's like, as long as our mind is in the ego's thought system, it's impossible to be happy. Like no matter what you can try all these different things, you know, you can have sex with the most beautiful women. You can make millions of dollars. Um, whatever like your wildest dreams you can do all that yeah sure you'll have some temporary pleasure and then maybe like a day later it's like oh i'm craving something else now and like let's say you have so much money that you can do whatever you want it'll just be like you you do something that you think you really want and then it's like oh now what's next and then you go and do what whatever's next and then you're like okay that wasn't really it either. And then you go and do something else and it's never really it because really what we're looking for is something that's really consistent, like a consistent happiness. We're not just looking for like brief pleasures. Um, You know, it's like, it's like I'm thinking of the the diagram in the hospital, you know, like your heartbeat. It's like, it it goes along and then a, a brief pleasure. Yeah. Maybe like a little spike. But then a long period of I'm dead. <laughs> and then you go through maybe like a month later, it's like something that excited you. You're like, oh, I'm alive for, for like a second. I'm alive. And then it's like, okay, I'm back to being dead. And it's like <laughs> the default state of mind, if you think you're in this world, is that you're dead. You know, and like death isn't really of the body. It's like a state of mind. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we don't, we don't want to be dead. Like we want to be alive. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah and yeah i feel like practically speaking the mind training of course in miracles is bringing to this state where we can be alive consistently and you know to me life is listening to the holy spirit because that means you're identifying with the spirit and the spirit's beyond this world so you're not stuck in this world full of limits because that's all this world is. It's just full of limits. You know, it's like I'm li- limited by this body, which is limited by a million other things. It gets sick. It's going to die. It, it's going to get problems and pain. And it's like, it seems like it's, it almost seems like I'm trapped in a body. It almost seems like my mind's trapped in a body. And, um, and yeah, we really want to just unwind from that because it's just, it's all a deception. It's all a trick and nothing, none of the body's adventures are ever going to satisfy us. Hmm. Yeah. And, and we can say that a million times to ourselves, but we really need the experience. And if you, if you're at a place where you're thinking, okay, yeah, um, I'm kind of bored with this life, you know, like I tried all these different things and it's like, what else is there? Like, is there anything else? It's like, that's actually a really, really good place to be because your mind's going to be then open for another experience to be shown that maybe I'm wrong about everything. I think, let me just be open to maybe there's something else, you know? That little crack of openness is so helpful, especially if you're like disillusioned with the world. Because then if you have that little openness, it's like, okay, I don't know anything. I'm open to seeing if there's anything else. And if there's anything, if, if there's any kind of higher power, anything out there, please 
please show me, please convince me. Like, I don't have to say maybe like you, you believe you don't believe in God or something, you know, it's just maybe like a little crack. It's like, okay, I don't know what I believe. I don't know anything. If there's anything higher than me, just please give me an experience that you're there. Give me an experience that I'm wrong, that this is all there is, that there is something better, that there is something consistent, you know, Mm -hmm. and then just be open to seeing what happens, you know. The open-mindedness is really the key. And it's, I know it's like, I think it's like the last characteristic of the teacher of God in the course, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> wow. I'm like still absorbing all that. <laughs> uh, and, um, yeah, I know, like, so that's all kind of been my prayer recently. Even for the show, I kind of told myself the number one thing I want for the show today. Well, I guess there's two, two number one things. One of them was to have a lot of fun. And the other one was for it to be involuntary, like completely involuntary. And I think they actually, well, they do go hand in hand. And so that's, that's what I want my entire life to be, like completely involuntary and a lot of fun. Mm. And yeah. And yeah, we just have to let go of our own personal control in order to go into that involuntary stream. Like, it's like I talked about last show. It's like, well, actually I use a little different metaphor for it. I said like, there's this stream and I was talking about guidance, but yeah, it's like, it's like you're lying on your back floating down a gentle river. And that's how, that's how I think most of us want life to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's just the flow of the guidance. And yeah, any expectations or any control as you so beautifully were talking about, that just gets in the way. And, you know, like you were saying, the mind training and yeah, just my experience has been, it's just, okay, you know, notice the expectations and then hand them over to whatever higher power, whatever you feel. Like for me, I just, it's like, you know, Jesus help me with this. Like I, I feel like I want this and yet I don't feel like it's given like you had mentioned sex relationships all of that and it's been the same thing for me and i've just it's been really cool to see the evolution in my mind more and more and more where you know these things that you know oh i really want to have sex or whatever it is that would be occurring in my mind or i really want relationship or oh i really want to do this thing or that thing it's actually just been seeing in my own experience like you know if i judge it or anything if i make it wrong it gets stuck I can't, it's like, it's gotta be in this non-judgment handing it over. And, and then if we can't seem to hand it over, if we can't seem to let go, if we are stuck in linear time and can't seem to, you know, switch the noodle around <laughs> to come to this still place in this moment, it's like, that, that has to be okay. Like that has to, we can't then be like, oh, well now, you know, messing up even more. It's like, no, that just keeps getting it more stuck. It's like, okay. And that'll be the ego's anthem. You suck. <laughs> that's, <laughs> you suck. I want you dead. That's the ego's anthem. <laughs> and yet we follow it because we're so familiar with it. There's this familiarity and, you know, there's this great video. I love just the title of the video, even uh, from David. It's called, I think familiarity or like bursting joy or like bursting love. And that's really our option. There is no middle. There is no middle. There's not an us, an ego and a Holy spirit. It's like rather have like the egoic thoughts or the Holy spirit thoughts. And there are no neutral thoughts. I believe that's a workbook lesson. You know, they all have this effect on our mind. Our thoughts are very powerful. And, and yeah. And so it just becomes like, like in my experience, the deeper I keep going, it just becomes this vigilance of like, okay, you know, I, I don't have a middle ground here. I'm either listening to the spirit or, or the ego and, and the ego wants me dead. So, you know, and it offers really nothing of value. And I have to keep seeing that's kind of the mind training I've experienced. Like until I'm willing to see the full extent of my own self-hatred, basically in any moment until I'm willing to 
you know, have the full experience of whatever's bothering me in that moment, most likely I'm not going to be willing to let it go. Others might be more willing, but I've seen myself to be a bit stubborn. <laughs> so it's like I have to seemingly go through the pain to see, okay, that was me following the ego or that was me, you know, because it was painful, it's not of the spirit. But I have to like somehow in my mind, I've had to see over and over and over and over and over again that it's it's not serving. It doesn't serve. It doesn't feel good. It's not it's not worthy of my holy mind. But I have to keep seeing it as an experience. I can be told that over and over and over again. But until, you know, I have to have that experience over again. I have to be convinced by the spirit, you know, because it's so ingrained. So, yeah, the mind training does become you know, handing it over. If I can't hand it over, try and join with a mighty companion. If that doesn't work, you know, or even before that, you know, a spirit, a levels of mind, something to help me get clear about. If none of those work, then just <laughs> really be with it. And actually the whole time it's really being with it. Watch it, watch it very closely. See that the expectations, the, the being in linear time, the not being present, all of it is, is not giving you the experience you want but like we have to pull the projection back. It's not because of the world. It's because of our expectation. It's because of our linear time addiction that we're unhappy. It's because of these, you know, these goals and all these rules we have set for ourselves that we never were supposed to, <laughs> you know, we're supposed to be clueless. We're supposed to have an, I don't know mind like Andy was talking about, you know, our holy mind is conceptless. You know, we have added everything onto it. And so all of it hasn't been given by Jesus. It's like all, the only goals you should have or anything or guidance is, is from the spirit, not because it's wrong, you know, to follow you, but because it's not worthy of you. You're worthy of peace. You know, we're all worthy of it. We're worthy of feeling love, you know, having joyful days, having miracles. You know, if miracles do not occur and they are natural, something has gone wrong and you're not guilty for it <laughs> but you know it is an opportunity just like in the movie divergent i love that movie because there was like this kind of positive reinterpretation if you haven't seen that movie you know check it out or check it on mwge uh i don't know if i can give a full context for it but i'll just share the part i wanted to and yeah this like main character she's just very like intuitive like this iso and basically anytime she kind of gets into this or like this fearful situation for her it's like this immediate experience of like oh it's not real you know it's like she'd be in these simulate uh, simulations and it would just be this trigger for her to basically go within and pray like check again and so actually that's a positive reinterpretation of any upset you have great it's actually just like any upset is just remember come back with him. Remember, you are dreaming. <laughs> like Andy has this shirt. I would see him wear sometimes. It was always so wonderful. I think he even had it on his desktop computer. You, like, remember, you are dreaming. You know, remember, this upset is not causative in the world. It's from your mind. You know, it's always that way. And yet, you know, we find all the excuses in our mind of, no, I really think this time, <laughs> I really think this time it's because you know, A didn't happen, B should have, you know, all this. It's like, no, it's, it's because I have, you know, I have added a thought or a goal or an expectation that wasn't given by the Spirit. I have got an add-on. Add yeah. Yeah, and I think uh, you mentioned the remember you are dreaming. And actually, I need to find that shirt. I don't know where it went. <laughs> but I know it's, it's, that's basically the goal of the course. And what we want to try to do is, or what the Holy Spirit is trying to help us do is let go of all these self-concepts that keep us attached to this world. Because as long as we have these self-concepts of who we think we are, then how are we supposed to be the dreamer of this dream? And how are we supposed to remember that we're dreaming if we have these self-concepts? Like, let's say I have a self-concept of I'm um, a Persian boy with black hair and uh, I like certain things, I have these preferences or whatever. You know, it's like, well, you can obviously see right there that I'm not the dreamer of the dream if I think that. So it's like the Holy Spirit's really gentle 
with us as we let go of all these beliefs that uphold all these self concepts that we have. And, and the thing is the ego will try to latch on, on this journey and um, try to make up new self concepts or try to, if you're, if you're letting go of old ones, it's going to try to find a new one. It's like, Oh, look over here. There's a, there's a self concept right there. Let's try that one. <laughs> and uh, so we really have to just be genuine and authentic with everything that's going on with us in our mind. Um, because yeah, it really could be anything. It could even be like, Oh, uh, you could be a speaker. You know, it's like before for me, it was like, I, the self concept that I was striving for was a multimillionaire, um, have nice cars and all this kind of stuff. And as I let that one go, the ego is trying to find new ones because it doesn't want me to remember that I'm dreaming. So then I even noticed a thought the other day. It's like, Oh, you could be a really good speaker. People are telling you that you're pretty good at speaking on this show. Like that could be a self concept. Like the egos, you know, like whispering in my ear on my shoulder, like uh, there's still a way to be in this world. Uh, let's like trying to give me some kind of temptation, but it's like, no, I want to be, the dream of the dream you know that's the experience that i want and that's the experience that i want consistently and no self-concept is going to give me the freedom that re remembering that i'm dreaming is going to give me because really in my mind i just see self-concepts as like some kind of like you know if you draw like a, a square in your mind it's like it's like and then you're that square when there's like this vast eternity available to you right now but then there's this like little box and it's like oh that's me and it's like, it's like this tiny speck. If you think of like a tiny speck of dust that's like on this chair behind me, in terms of this entire universe, all the galaxies and all the planets and everything. And I'm like, oh, oh that's me. You see me right there. See that speck of dust? That's me. It's like, <laughs> it's like why, why would we want that? If something so much more vast and bigger and eternal is available to us right now. So, yeah, I think, but as long as we think like, you know, oh, my life's going amazing. Like it's amazing. Sometimes there's ups, sometimes there's downs, but that's normal. You know, like everyone's like that. That's, and that's the kind of thing that keeps us trapped. It's like looking at other people and being like, um, either comparing with them. It's like, I'm doing better than them. It's like, oh yeah, those starving children in Africa. Well, I'm doing better than them. So my life's good. What are you talking about? I don't need to be a dreamer. The dream I'm doing well, but really it's like, um, Jesus says in the course, it's, it's like, it's not that you ask for too little. It's at, no, what is it? <laughs> I forget. It's, it's not that you ask for far too much, but it's like, you're a actually asking for far too little because yeah, I don't know what I'm saying, but yeah. <laughs> no, I get it. No, what I, wanted. I think I, I said what I wanted to I say. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, actually, as you were even talking earlier, you were just mentioning like, oh, we have to somehow, you know, for us, you know, for people who don't think their life is bad or, oh, it's going so well. It's like, oh, sometimes, you know, we do need to play some things out as, as given just to see that it's not what we really wanted. And even one of those movies that was coming to my mind, um, Okay, I'm going to kind of blank. I think it was called like Bedazzled or something. But basically in the movie, he gets seven wishes from actually, he doesn't really know it in the moment, but it's like the devil. And he's like, okay, I get, you know, I want to be a millionaire. And then it like totally crashes on him. Okay, well, I want to be the best poet in the world or the smartest person. And he basically tries it all out, all the things of the world. And you see that at, at the end of the day, he's still not happy. None of it actually goes the way he wants because he doesn't know his own best interest. Again, we're asking for far too little, like Andy was talking about. We actually, you know, to ask really for, you know, our magnitude, you know, is, is Jesus, what is your will for me? You know, what would you have me do? Because again, the Holy Spirit has all of time and space in mind and is always looking for our greatest good. And so that's like asking for the magnitude. What would you, I mean, do now, like, what, what, what is your will for me? That's the most loving thing. That's how we get into our name, too. <laughs> okay. So thank you, Nicholas. I think we're all time's up now, but thank you guys for joining us. It was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. I know Nicholas did, too. And I think our next show is in three weeks.
Um, but I wanted to bring up the online retreat, but they'll probably do that. But thank you guys th so much. Thank you for joining us. Oh. See you in three weeks. See you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much, Nicholas and Andy. That was that was beautiful. Um, yeah, I loved everything you were talking about. What came to mind for me um, was just this idea of moving out of self-concepts and beginning to question them into these more expansive self-concepts. And I feel like that's been a lot of the journey for me has been the spirit is guiding me out of these, you could say, lower self-concepts into something that feels a little more expansive to something that feels a little more expansive and that, yeah, we're not going to be hurled into reality. We're just going to be gently guided. And just even this, like a prime example, the shows and the <laughs> opportunity and, you know, like each time it feels there's fear, you know, there's like right now I'm having this fear, but, but it's really just the spirit showing, no, you're actually more you're more expansive in truth than what you actually believe so i'm going to give you these opportunities to to have an experience that you know of that so yeah, yeah he's got a huge convincing job to do if we let him and i i feel like what you guys were sharing about with the course andy and nicholas and i just feel so grateful that it's so practical and that that's the way we live our lives here where we are allowing the spirit to actually convince us to like let go of what's familiar and come into that experience of bursting joy with the next, you know, the next steps that are given. And then, you know, suddenly after that, we outgrow that. And, you know, before we know it, we're experiencing a more and more consistently happy state of mind. So very grateful. And oh, I love what you guys were saying too about the add-ons because I just kept hearing the add-ons are in the mind. They're not about, oh, well, I shouldn't be doing, you know, this. Um, like in terms of any kind of task, because that's the way it can come into my mind sometimes. But it's like the rules for decision in the course, where wherever you find that you've had an upset, it's to honestly think about what you've thought that God would not have you think, or that God would not have thought. So yeah, very cool. Very cool about the add-ons. Okay, well, uh, we've got another show coming up in about 10 or between 10 and 15 minutes, uh, Ken and Anna with Divine Intervention. So stay tuned and join us, join us soon. Strawberry Feels Forever Festival is just this welcome of those that have been called to this deep path to come together. And I always like it. We just seem to come in touch with people in such given ways and then invite them. And yeah, it's such a joy mm -hmm. to meet them in the field. You know, that's part of the fun of why we put this on take the time to put it on because, you know, there's a welcoming. It's like, ah, oh, welcome. And, you know, sometimes we hear their music or we have interaction like with Maddie Z or, you know, you and uh, Ricky had a beautiful encounter with him. And yeah, it just warms the heart to think of some of the ones that are going to be coming and joining us there. Netta, Bowen and these different ones that have been called and from our community. This is just such an opportunity to extend the gift that they have received and uh, bless everyone and be blessed themselves. So, yeah, it's really precious. It is. It is. It's like each of those musicians that you mentioned, they're all like deeply devoted to the course as their path as well and just that I mean the devotion to the course it's such a deep path of undoing the self-concept and being willing to let go of everything to serve like to serve Christ and serve the spirit and so that's part of what I feel um, 
it's an honor to invite them and have them come and share their gifts because I know what they've gone through, <laughs> mm -hmm. even to be able yes. to receive the music. Yeah. They've gone through a lot of letting go and clearing their mind and devotion to the mind training. And, and so to have them come and share their experiences. And, you know, for most of them, their songs have come as a, as an effect of the miracle mm -hmm. or as a desire for the miracle. Like it's part of a prayer. Like I need to feel your love or help me release this, help me change my mind, guide me, show me, or then the effect of going into a mystical experience. And so the songs we're going to be blessed with at the whole festival are, are that. They're purely experiential. Mm -hmm. All about the awakening, from the awakening, for the awakening. Yeah. <laughs> and an invitation to be in it together. Yeah. And it's not a performance. Like yeah. you said, it's like none of us are going there to perform for an external audience. It's, it's the intention is to be in the presence and allow that to, to bless us and everyone at mm -hmm. the same time. And, mm -hmm. and I feel that's what in some ways is probably different about this to most even concerts mm -hmm. where there's a real focus on the perfection of the form and of course we're going to have incredibly high quality because that mm -hmm. supports you know, yeah. the, the music and we already have a team of um, volunteers, friends who are very specialized at working with sound and so all of that's going to be there too. But at the end of the day, you know, if the sound, if the electricity went out, you know, we would all have mm -hmm. the exact same experience yeah. with or without the form yeah. of it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's all about the presence and the fact that the spirit wants it to happen and, mm -hmm. and it's the spirit doing it all. And so nothing can actually stop that experience or interfere yeah. with it in any way. Yeah, nothing can go wrong. Right. Really. coming to you from my cabin here at the Living Miracles Monastery and I have this deep like heartfelt yearning for myself since I was very small that 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 I just wanted to know what the truth was what the truth of everything was and I really found when I came here that I was available to be shown what the truth was I became aware that what I'd been doing was distracting myself and so there was no chance of me discovering what the truth was because of my fear of being alone or being quiet or being still. And here, because the container is so pure, it was possible to drop in deep. It was possible to have this experience of discovering how loved I was. You know, there's, there's a healthness in the mind. There's, there's a container of the canyon. There's the beautiful nature outside and you can hear the wind and the birds and the bunnies and all of the little things around here. It's like a St. Francis dream out in this canyon. And I really, for myself, I just wanted my heart to be able to open up and feel safe and contained and unafraid. Because I think there's such a deep belief that there's deep, deep darkness there that's going to come up every time you're silent. And coming for a personal stay or even a silent week-long retreat, there's so much support for the mind. And that's wonderful. So this, this space and this place is just devoted to saying, take courage, come, sink in, discover your loved, discover the beloved inside, discover all the inspiration that's going to support you for when you seem to step out of here and, and there are other calls upon your time. Nurture and renew. This is the water of life and it's for everybody. Because no matter what tradition you come from, it's all about know thyself.
So far beyond the personal and yet while you believe in the personal and you're opening your heart to this vast love the words and the symbols can reach your heart in helpful ways there's really nothing but just beautiful pure simplicity that's always just what is the truth is simple present moment is simple. While you still have connotations and meaning and interpretations around it, then words like scarcity and lack and funds and so on and so forth, it's, it's really being in the gratitude so fully that everything else just fades from awareness. people think of spirituality or spiritual journey is like be happy and you know you, you can't consistently be happy until you get in touch with what's unhappy Welcome back, everyone. <laughs> so uh, we have our next show lined up. It's going to be Ken and Anna with Divine Intervention. So I, I'll just take it away, Anna and, Anna and Ken. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Buenos dias. Bienvenidos a todos. Yeah, so today we wanted to talk about devotion. Así que el día de hoy queríamos hablar acerca de la devoción. And that began this week um, for me. Y esto empezó esta semana para mí. In questioning how devoted am I. En preguntarme qué tan devoto soy. Um, and I was thinking about the rules of decision. Y estaba pensando acerca de las reglas para tomar decisiones. And thinking about how many times am I making decisions by myself. Y pensando en cuántas veces estoy tomando decisiones por mi cuenta. And not joining with Jesus. Y no reuniéndome con Jesús. So I could see like my mind was like getting into a bit of judgment. Podía ver como mi mente se estaba eh, poniendo en este espacio de juicio. Like I'm not giving enough. Como que no estoy dando suficiente. 
I'm not listening enough. No estoy escuchando lo suficiente. Mm. <clears throat> But then um, it was more of a deeper question. It was like, well, what actually is devotion? Truly, what is it to be devoted? Pero luego llegó a una, a una pregunta mucho más profunda. ¿Qué es en realidad estar devoto? So deciding rather than to judge whether I was devoted or not. Or not Así que en lugar de decidir entre si era devoto o no era devoto, was to be shown what devotion is. Era hacer que me enseñaran qué era ser devoto. And so it was only just downstairs, just before the show, that things started to come to me that were shown to me this week. Y así que so, justo antes de empezar este show, que estábamos ahí abajo, empecé a ver, uh, se me empezó a mostrar cosas que había experimentado esta semana. And I had this um, beautiful experience. Y tuve esta hermosa experiencia. And it was so small that I actually kind of forgot about it. Y fue pequeña y de alguna manera me estaba olvidando de ella. And it was reading a line in the course. Y era a leer una, una línea en el curso. Um, which is pretty much almost on every page. Que está básicamente en cada página. <laughs> And he tells us, I am, you are the son of God. Y él nos dice, tú eres el hijo de Dios. And it was like the first time I actually like felt something go into my heart. Y fue la primera vez que en realidad sentí algo... Sentí esto llegar directamente a mi corazón. And it brought up this emotion, just some gentle emotion was like coming over, like, yes, you are the son of God. Trajo esta, estas emociones muy gentiles, como diciendo, sí, tú eres el hijo de Dios. And before it was a nice idea. Y antes solo era una idea bonita. That I hoped to achieve in the future. Que estaba esperando alcanzar en el futuro. But yet something was able just to penetrate me, just say, yes, you are the son of God, and it was like, wow, I am the son of God. Pero algo fue como que entró en mí y me dijo, sí, en realidad, tú eres el hijo de Dios. And what I'd seen over the, the week of this exploration of devotion. Y lo que he visto a través de esta semana de exploración acerca de la devoción. Was the importance of prayer. Fue la importancia de la oración. And I often saw my prayers where of like, please, Lord, help me. Y vi que muchas de mis oraciones eran, por favor, Señor, ayúdame. It was like I was in this sort of like unworthy position, like, oh, you've, you've got to help me. Estaba con esta posición de no sentirme digno, diciendo, tú tienes que ayudarme. Like, I'm only coming to you when I've got a problem. Que solo estoy viniendo a ti cuando tengo un problema. But as me and Anna were um, discussing this. Pero mientras Anna y yo estábamos hablando de esto. Um, my prayer actually changed. Mi oración en realidad cambió. Which helped change in my heart. Que ayudó a cambiarlo en mi corazón. And the prayer was, what can I give to you, Lord? Mi oración fue, ¿qué puedo darte a ti, Señor? And for me, that just felt like really different. Y para mí eso fue muy diferente. Like in this unworthiness that I'm so terrible that I need your help. En esta como, <clears throat> no sentirme merecedor y, y sentir que... Soy terrible y no puedo hacer esto, Señor. And in that, it was like I wasn't actually wanting to join with God because I wasn't equal. Y en realidad estaba diciendo, no quería unirme con, con el Señor porque no me sentía igual. But to actually say, what can I give to you? Pero decir en realidad, ¿qué puedo darte a ti? Just felt so much lighter in my heart. Solo se sintió mucho más liviano en mi corazón. <clears throat> And so it was really beautiful last night because we watched a film called Knowing. Así que fue muy hermoso para mí eh, una película que vimos anoche que se llama Knowing, sabiendo. And it just it was exactly what we'd been talking about all week about devotion, really. Y fue exactamente lo que habíamos <laughs> estado hablando acerca de la devoción toda esta semana. So that will be going up on Spreaker in a couple of days' time by Andy. So I highly recommend you listen to that. Um, The talk, it was absolutely fabulous. Así que en un par de días va a subirse a speaker y realmente les recomiendo verla porque estuvo fabulosa. And what happens is, is Nicholas Cage, he's really lost faith. Y lo que pasa es que Nicholas Cage ha perdido la fe. In the beginning, and he's got a very scientific mind. Y tiene una mente su muy científica. But there was just a little crack that was open in his mind. A little willingness was there just to see something a little bit different. Pero había una pequeña abertura, un pequeño agujero para abrirse a algo diferente. He thought that everything was just happening randomly and it was just fate, luck, that things were happening. Se There was no order to it, really. 
él pensó que todo estaba pasando al azar, que no había ningún orden, que todo estaba pasando como en desorden, porque sí. And his wife had died. Y su esposa había muerto. And uh, there was one scene where the um, son, um, he said, listen, he said to his son, like, yeah, I don't know for sure. I don't know for sure if there is heaven or not. Y hay una escena donde está con su hijo y le dice, mira, yo en realidad no sé I'm not si saying, el cielo realmente existe. Yeah, I'm not saying there isn't and I'm not saying there is. No estoy diciendo que existe o que no existe. But he says to him, but you can believe if you want to believe in heaven. Pero él le dice a su hijo, si tú quieres creer en el cielo, puedes creer en el cielo. And it seems to give the boy some um, comfort. Y parece que le da cierto confort al niño. And for me, I saw that. It's like he was in that not knowing, said, listen, I don't know. So then he was open to be shown, like, if heaven is true. Y para mí ese fue el momento donde él estaba en esa posición de yo no sé. Y estaba abierto a que se le fuera mostrado. And then this triggered him finding his course in miracles. Yeah, esto fue como que él hubiera encontrado su curso de milagros. Which was a load of numbers on a um, sheet que from fue, 50 years ago. Que fueron un montón de números eh, en una hoja que venía de 50 años atrás. And in a way, it was like, for me, it was like bringing the darkness to the light. Y para mí fue como tomar toda la oscuridad y traerla a la luz. It was like this map that showed all this sort of suffering going on, seemingly. Era como que esta era un mapa que le estaba mostrando todo este sufrimiento. Like the unconscious. Como el inconsciente. In the way that Jesus has brought the Course of Miracles to us. En la manera en que Jesús ha traído el Curso de Milagros a nosotros. Showing us the map that there's a lot underneath there, unconscious, and I can actually show you how to get in touch with that so you can release it from your mind. Así que nos muestra todo esto que está debajo y nos ayuda a través del curso para que podamos llevarlo a la luz. And so Nicholas Cage starts going on this journey of wanting to discover like what is really going on. Así que Nicholas Cage toma este este camino para descubrir qué es realmente lo que está pasando. Because he'd worked out that some of the numbers were predicting the future. Porque empieza a ver que hay algunos de los números que predicen el futuro. And that was going against that everything was random. Y eso iba en contra de que todo era al azar. And so as the course teaches, the script's written. Y como el curso dice, el guión está escrito. And he was starting to see this for himself. Y él empezó a ver esto a través de esta, este camino. So his faith and his devotion to this was becoming quite strong. Así he que, wanted to know the truth. Así que su fe y su devoción acerca de esto empezó a volverse cada vez más fuerte. Él quería saber la verdad. So he come from no faith to no devotion. His devotion was actually to whiskey. Sí, venía de ninguna fe a devoción. Su devoción antes era en realidad al whiskey. To, to now thinking things are a little bit different than I expected, so I'm going to give everything to this, devote myself to this. Y al ver que, habían, que las cosas eran diferentes a la manera en que él las miraba, y abrirse, voy a dar toda mi devoción a esto. And for me, one of the other pinnacle points in the movie was actually a deep teaching of Jesus that bodies can't join, but minds can. Una de las eh, partes más importantes también para mí de la película era en esta parte donde Jesús dice, eh, los cuerpos no se pueden unir, pero las mentes sí. And there comes a point where his son can actually transcend. He's ready to go. Y hay un punto donde su hijo ya puede ascender, ya está listo para irse. But Nicholas Cage still had some forgiveness to do. Pero Nicholas todavía tenía cierto perdón, un trabajo de perdón que tenía que hacer. So they had to separate, seemingly. Así que tenían que aparentemente separarse. But at this point in the movie, he knew that he couldn't separate, that it wasn't about bodies. Pero en este punto, él se da cuenta que no podían estar separados, que no era acerca de los cuerpos. And his son got a little upset and said, Dad, you said we were going to be together forever. Y su hijo se molesta un poco y le dice, papá, pero tú dijiste que íbamos a estar juntos para siempre. And at that point he said, yes, we are all going to be together. I believe that and I know that now. I know that's true. Y él sabía que esto era verdad, que vamos a estar juntos siempre. So his son was able to go with the angels. Así que su hijo pudo irse con los ángeles. And Nicholas Cage knew exactly what he needed to go on his journey of forgiveness. Y Nicholas hizo exactamente lo que él necesitaba para... Seguir en su camino del perdón. To go and see his father. Ir a ver a su padre. 
So it was like we were just shown last night, wow, this beautiful devotion of how you may not feel like you have much devotion, like how my um, reflection began, but yet it's always there. Y esta película me mostró que a veces sentimos que no tenemos suficiente devoción, pero en realidad todo, es, todo esto está ahí. And so in a, in a few minutes we're going to show a clip. Así que en un par de minutos vamos a mostrarles un pequeño video. From someone who we think is very devoted. De alguien que creemos que es muy, muy devoto. His name is Saint Francis. Su nombre es San Francisco. And I was thinking, well, this could be a really amazing thing to do, to watch Knowing First and then go into St. Francis and the Club of San Sister Moon. Pensé que algo muy bueno para hacer sería ver esta película de Knowing y después pasar a ver esta película de San Francisco de Asís. And so we felt that this clip was showing the non-compromise. Y vimos que este, este pequeño clip está mostrando el no comprometerse. So, Anna, you actually made this clip, didn't you? Sí. Mm. <laughs> Yo en realidad hice este, este video, hice los cortes. You, you, put it, you put it all together, you were inspired mm -hmm. to do that. Sí. <laughs> 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 yes, I felt very inspired because when I see San Francis, I could just see that his whole heart is set in God in heaven. His whole heart, and you can feel it when you're watching him speak. Y la razón por la que hice este clip es porque cuando veo a San Francisco, veo que todo, todo su corazón está ahí. Todo su corazón está puesto en Jesús y en el cielo. Y ustedes lo pueden sentir, pueden sentir la presencia de, del Señor ahí, de verdad. That is really what inspires me. And this clip, it's about this point when he's been guided to build this church and because his light was so bright, mm -hmm. he all the like disciples gather around him and they all want to be like a order in the Catholic Church. Y llega este momento que me parece muy, muy inspirador porque con esa gran luz que tenía San Francisco, otras personas, otros discípulos se acercan a él y ambos han recibido la guianza de, de hacer una um, iglesia y de formar una orden en la iglesia católica para poder seguir este camino. And yeah, so right now, they, in this scene that we're going to show, they are with the Pope. And yeah, you just be able to feel his heart, his full heart on God. Y en esta escena van a poder sentir realmente cómo todo su corazón está con, con Dios. Y él ya está aquí en frente al Papa con esta petición. So we have a little six minute treat for you all. Así que tenemos un pequeño regalo de seis minutos aquí. Mm. So let us know when you're ready, Nicholas, and you can start the clip. Well, that pretty much says it all. Eso básicamente lo dice todo. Yeah, I can really feel like so many things that he said. Realmente puedo sentir todas, tantas cosas que él dijo. Even at the beginning when he says, um, store your treasure in heaven. Incluso al principio cuando él dice, guarda tu tesoro en el cielo. His whole heart was already aligned with the Spirit in that. Todo su corazón ya estaba alineado con el Espíritu en eso. Y... Yeah, it's like putting your, your whole faith and your whole being into the eternal where nothing will be rotten or stolen. Y era como realmente poner todo tu, tu corazón en el cielo, en, en algo que no va a ser robado o desecho. 
And when he's saying you cannot follow two masters, you will be devoted to one or devoted to the other. Cuando dice que no puedes seguir a dos, a dos maestros, porque o vas a ser devoto a uno o vas a ser devoto al otro. And I think my prayer is to really be devoted to the Holy Spirit, like just really praying every moment, like I am here, God, how can I give? Like, as, as you were saying. Mm -hmm. y realmente siento como quiero estar en esta oración de, Señor, aquí estoy. ¿Qué más puedo dar para ti? ¿Qué quieres que haga para ti? And, y esta parte también de que no podemos servir a, a dos, sino mi oración realmente es esta. Quiero seguir al Espíritu Santo. Eh? Quiero estar realmente en esto. Por favor, ayúdame. Yeah, I just, I just love this so much. It's so, such a powerful clip. Realmente me encanta este, este clip es tan, tan poderoso. That part, even when he's with the Pope and he says, the Pope says, you, we are so focused in the error mm. and not in our original innocence. It's like, wow. <laughs> yeah, this just lights up my heart. And y esta parte donde está con el Papa y le dice, estamos tan enfocados en el error que no, que no podemos ver nuestra inocencia original. Y esto es increíble, de verdad. Yeah, I just, um, I love that he didn't, waver from his mission. A mí me encanta que él no, no titubeó con su misión. He was willing to be wrong. Él estaba dispuesto a estar equivocado. That humbleness. Yeah. Esa humildad que él tenía. Yeah. It was like, okay, I'm going to the Pope. Y estaba con esto, bueno, voy a ir con el Papa. I've been given this mission by Jesus to build the church. Se me, Jesús me dio esta misión para construir esta iglesia. And for some unknown reason, others around him weren't, weren't happy about that. Y por alguna razón, algunas personas no estaban felices con esto. And he wanted that blessing. Y él quería esa bendición. To see what he needed to do. Was it, what, what did the Lord really want from him? Y ver qué era lo que el Señor quería de él. And so traveling for miles and miles, I don't know how many, but it's, it's a pretty long journey that they went on. Y viajaron um, to get por, there. por millas y millas. In, y no sabían cómo realmente llegar aquí. And he just has this gift just to share. Y tiene este hermoso regalo solo para dar. As he starts sharing with the Pope about the, um, the birds. Y cuando empieza a compartir con el Papa acerca de los pájaros. And just reminding the Pope of the reason why we're, we're doing what we're doing. Y le recuerda al Papa por qué es que estamos haciendo esto. And that's what I love about this clip mm. too. Because that fire in the Pope, like mm. he remembers <laughs> why he's doing yeah. everything he was doing. Yeah. And that's what this week made for me. Mm. Just lighting up my heart. It, like even deeper now, even mm. deeper. Why, why am I doing this? Y, y para mí fue esta, eso esta semana, eh, estar en esa exploración de la devoción, cuál es el propósito, por qué estoy haciendo esto. Y por eso fue que esta parte del Papa me encantó, porque el Papa, al ver a San Francisco, como que esta llama en su corazón se activa. Ah, por eso es que estaba haciendo esto. Este era el propósito. Yeah, and I was thinking this morning, um, being grateful for having all my brothers around me. Y me estaba pensando esta mañana, agradecido por tener a todos mis hermanos conmigo. Because it helps with my discipline. Porque me ayuda con la disciplina. And my devotion. Y mi devoción. To remember that everyone around me is in alignment with that. Y recordar que todos los que están conmigo están alineados en eso. Like St. Francis, when he came along, they'd lost their way. The, the Pope had lost his way and he came along to give that gift. Hey, this is, this, is, this is the reason why we're doing it. We're all innocent. Y fue porque, fue como si todos alrededor estaban... Eh, Perdidos, y fue como que él les mostró el camino. Aquí está, por eso es que mm. estamos haciendo esto. 
So when my mind wanders, I have a brother there. Así que cuando mi mente titubea, tengo un hermano ahí para recordarme. To remind me of the truth. Recordarme la verdad. As Saint Francis done for the whole of his life. Como hizo San Francisco por toda su vida. So what we felt is we felt that we could join in a prayer. Así que lo que sentimos es que podríamos unirnos en una oración. Together. Juntos. So if you feel comfortable, you could close your eyes. Y que si te sientes cómodo, puedes cerrar tus ojos. My eyes, my tongue, my hands, my feet today have but one purpose, to be given Christ to use to bless the world with miracles. Mis ojos, mi boca, mis manos y mis pies tienen hoy un solo propósito, estar al servicio de Cristo a fin de que Él pueda utilizarlos para bendecir al mundo con milagros. Father, I give all that is mine today to Christ, to use in any way that best will serve the purpose that I share with him. Padre, hoy le entrego a Cristo todo lo que es mío para que Él lo utilice de la manera que sea más beneficiosa para el propósito que comparto con Él. Nothing is mine alone, for He and I have joined in purpose. Nada es exclusivamente mío, pues él y yo nos hemos unido en un propósito común. Thus has learning come amongst, um, almost to its appointed end. De este modo, el aprendizaje casi ha llegado a su señalado final. A while I work with him to serve his purpose. Por un tiempo colaboraré con él en el logro de su propósito. Then I lose myself in my identity and recognize that Christ is but myself. Luego me fundiré en mi identidad y reconoceré que Cristo no es sino mi ser. Amen. Amen. Yeah, thank you very much for joining us today. Muchas mm. gracias por haber compartido hoy con nosotros. Mm. Gracias. Mm. Gracias. Mm. 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 Wow, thank you, Ken and Anna. It's very beautiful. Very beautiful. Mm. I'm empty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. I felt really. I think what, what came to mind for me was watching the clip. I wrote, my mind went to that a scene that happened earlier in that movie when St. Francis was adding a stone onto the wall of his church that he was building, and that was part of his function. And that devotion can look like that, like moving a stone onto a wall that we can't judge what devotion looks like. It can look seemingly small to the world, but huge if it's coming from the spirit. So I want to thank you for just, yeah, just that whole, yeah, sharing about devotion. Okay, well, just let that sink in over the next few minutes. Beautiful prayer. And uh, join us again in 10 to 15 minutes for uh, the next show, Free Your Mind with Laverne. You already are what you're looking for, what you're searching for, and you don't have to fix yourself, which is pretty much the mentality of the world. Mm -hmm.
When you see yourself as weary, come me and be undone. So this book is really, if you give yourself over to it, that's really what the book is about. It's about coming back to a remembering of who you are. None of us were really told how to go inside. A lot of us read that in different spiritual traditions that uh, you're supposed to search within for the answers. And so I think this book, in one sense, gives you the how. As you begin to open up your mind and open up your heart, then you do get in touch with some pretty intense emotions. And this book is, in that sense, a gentle guide as well to take you down deeper and deeper and deeper. It's been a culmination of about close to 20 years of collaborations that have gone into this book. And some of you who have seen the book know that it's actually three books in one. It's kind of like a trilogy in one. The book really helps with the mind training of starting to realize that everything is, a, is an idea and that ideas leave not their source. And just like Christ could never leave the mind of God, the ideas and everything we perceive in this world as much as it may seem to be out there, isn't really out there. That the, the way the healing occurs is this integration of seeing that anything that you're bothered by, anything that you're disturbed by, frustrated by, it's because you're still trying to see it outside of your mind. And the Spirit is gently using this book, and as far as the unwinding, to bring it back to see that you have empowerment, you Actually, your mind contains all the thoughts. Hi, everyone. It's a beautiful day, and we just felt to it is a beautiful day. Talk about a little bit about the Quiet Answer Retreat that's coming up the end of June. And uh, just share our feelings about it, really. Yeah, I just really appreciate the ebb and flow of, of how the space has been used. Mm -hmm. And I haven't been here for quite a while, so I just came up a couple of days ago. And, oh, it just feels mm -hmm. so nice to be mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Really nice. I, I feel it holds mm -hmm. like that space. Whatever you're you're here for, is so completely supported. Yeah, most like you come and you somehow it, like you give yourself 100% permission to mm -hmm. to do what you came for. Yeah, you know? and I think that that's what this retreat is for. It's going to be more of an experience to come into and to experience the love and the presence, really, of this present moment. Mm -hmm. And that's what's so inspiring to us right now, is letting go of linear time and just seeing the beauty and the abundance of what's offered in the present moment. And so when you come into this environment and you start to open up to that, it's like, a whole new world can open up to you and there will be um, uh, availability for sessions where if there's anything on the heart that you've wrestled with um, that there will be time spent with that so that there can be that deep application of just forgiveness and and really really going away with a sense of uh, upliftment and and a, a greater sense of peace. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Yeah, and whether you are already experiencing uh, mm -hmm. dropping into the stillness or that is the prayer of your heart that you feel this call mm -hmm. knowing that you need it, yeah. um, this is the kind of retreat where you can come no matter where you're at yeah. with that experience mm -hmm. um, because there's a lot of support it, it's gonna there'll be there's some structure obviously with breakfast and lunch and you know the meal times and then also the 
coming together for a guided meditation, for an altar session. Mm -hmm. And we really do support um, the awareness of mindfulness and the backdrop of mind training, to, which is the, uh, the practice of stilling the mind to then allow the mm -hmm. silence to come into awareness. Because as we all know, you can't make silence happen. Yeah. You can't make stillness happen. The one that wants to make something happen is the very part of the mind that is to be mm. released, to, to come into the experience of the silence that's always there. Mm. And so we're yeah, just very much in support of um, practice for just training the mind to be still and present. Um, and, and then if your mind is ready to really drop into the vast stillness, mm. then this is a very supportive mm -hmm. environment and atmosphere to, mm -hmm. to allow that to happen. Yeah, it feels like it will be highly individualized in a way. Like mm -hmm. you said, all are welcome no matter where you think you're at on the journey. Mm -hmm. And the name of it is The Quiet Answer, which came to us in prayer, and we just loved that. There's a section in the course called The Quiet Answer, and, and there was a beautiful post about this retreat talking about how God will answer us in the stillness of, of our mind and our heart, and, and, and I feel like that's what this is for. Mm -hmm. Like It's kind of like a step aside so that that which loves you can find you. You know, instead of seeking, 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 it's like there's just this gentle stepping back mm -hmm. into this quietness of the mind. And, and so that will be guided. That will be guided as needed. And so it is a silent retreat, it's, but it's not complete silence. It's a contemplative retreat. It's a nurturing, loving, um, beautiful. I just feel like it's like going to the spa like we used to in, the, in our life before you know and just be, just be pampered the body and everything and this is like this is a spa for the soul and just to come here and just to be loved up and to be nurtured and carried and to and to really mm, kind of uncover that worthiness of that and to just accept accept it in so we just really extend a warm invitation that's what we wanted to share today is just yeah come join us for this beautiful time together mm -hmm. Yeah, still mind is no small gift. <laughs> we are in deep appreciation yeah. <laughs> of a still mind, and and so to support support this mm -hmm. for anyone who's called to come really is our joy, like the deepest yeah. joy of our heart. Yeah. So relationship with God is what it's all about. Yeah, so. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.
feel good about ourselves, when actually we have to learn to have integrity, really deep integrity, before we can actually reach that point of peace. So for me, I had to start to see how far am I willing to go with this integrity? How far am I willing to go where I actually start to experience that there's nothing outside of me? Um, I had to start questioning everything about the world. Um, for example, um, when, when I would get disturbed about politicians and, and various political stances or whatever, you know, I had Jesus inside saying, you, you're not really involved in politics. Politics are in you. When I got upset about society, I said, I just am never going to be able to be peaceful as long as I'm living in this society, in this culture, I will never be peaceful. Jesus would say, you are not in the society. The society is in you. It was always pointing me back to everything that I perceive is based on belief. All the way to the point that he's saying that, that there is no world apart from what you think. That everything we think is out there in the world is actually in consciousness. And we're still holding it in consciousness. We're still holding on to the beliefs and the concepts. And then tricking ourselves to think that the world is doing it to us, instead of us having the power. Us having, we can control the direction of our thinking. We don't have to succumb to ego thinking. We can actually align with God and think with God, instead of trying to think against God. We're back. Welcome back everyone. We've got Laverne here in the studio with us, and she's going to be sharing all about Spiri and um, Mind Tools with her show, For Your Mind. So over to you, Laverne. Thanks, Kristen. Um, yeah, I just feel like my show is just an opportunity to really extend this incredible gift that I've received from using um, these Mind Tools in the last six years of um, being a part of Living Miracles. And... Yeah, I just uh, was driving over here to the studio and I had this really incredible feeling of gratitude for um, this feeling that comes up, you know, after I've moved through some sort of an upset and really a, a, a feeling of a deeper connection with the spirit and, and a deeper connection with my brothers. And um, last Wednesday, uh, I did a uh, spirit session with, uh, with the community over a at La Casa de Milagros and uh, actually had somebody in the community come up to the front of the room and we went through a, a Spiri session together and it was very deep uh, for me anyway and uh, there was this point in the whole um, conversation, the dialogue, where I really felt like my interest and his interests were not different, were not separate and it was just such a um, a delicious feeling, you know, like, wow, <laughs> I didn't see his issue or problem any different from me. And there was like this merge and, and then afterwards, just even a, a deeper feeling of closeness that it seemed like everybody was experiencing in the room, like it was a, a shared healing experience. So, so that's my prayer for, for this show. And and I, and in saying that I wanted to do this, I really was wanting to have like an sort of interactive um, session where somebody that has a, a, an upset in the mind would be willing to um, like be transparent and step forward and, and go through a spirit session together. And in that way, all of us can see, you know, how is it that we can really utilize fully utilize these tools what is it that are common kind of obstacles that people may have to using these tools and and how can we overcome them you know together by looking at you know the different levels of the mind together um, and moving through those together to the healing at the end you know to see 
that there must be something else that we're wanting other than the peace of God and, you know, and making a choice at that point of whether or not we want to hold on to that desire or we want to um, choose for peace. So yeah, at this time, I'd just like to see just by a show of hand, if there's anybody here uh, online that would like to go through a Spiri session together. So I see uh, there's Mary. I, she has her hand up. So Mary, how are you? I'm great. Um, I'm very grateful to be here. And um, I, I'm so moved by the sharing, uh, the transparency and the spontaneity of, um, you know, everyone who spoke this morning, uh, Andy and Nicholas, um, Ken and Anna. So um, my issue is that um, I have gotten into a habit of uh, waking up at four o'clock in the morning. Uh, Can you hold for one minute, Mary? I'm just gonna ask Nicholas to go ahead and set up the Spiri session so and and uh, Nicholas, if you can just take it to the point of in the in the ten minute session, uh, where the question is up and is what is the what is the upset? So, go ahead and carry on, Mary. While he's doing that, you can go ahead and share what it is that's on your on your mind. Okay, uh, so I'm waking up at four o'clock in the morning. Uh, I actually have been doing this for some years. Um, and uh, it seems that my ego voice is just screaming in my mind. And um, I'm half awake, half asleep. Uh, and it's all sorts of thoughts are coming up. And so I have tried various, um, to use various tools to work through this. And, uh, and now it's moved into a fear that um, I, you know, ego is stronger <laughs> than spirit's voice, uh, uh, and and I almost go to bed with a fear that I'm going to wake up at four o'clock in the morning. Um, and so uh, <laughs> I have spirited this a couple of times, um, and uh, I would like to do it again with you. Okay, that sounds beautiful. So. Again, this is a great one to take through Spiri together if you've tried to do it on your own, so even in joining in this way. So the unhappiness is uh, when you think about waking up at 4, 4 a.m. in the morning. Yes. Is that correct? Okay. Yes. So is this something that's happening? In, in the future in the past or might happen in the future or both both okay so that's a yes yes okay. so can you describe the feelings that come up for you when you wake up at four in the morning panic Overwhelm, helplessness, fear. Helplessness instead of hopelessness there, Nicholas. Anything else, Mary? Um, let's go with that. Okay. So is there someone or something to blame for waking up at 4 a.m. in the morning? Well, what I'm good at, what my ego mind is good at is blaming myself. Every time I've done Spiri, that's, I've not blamed anybody else, but I blame myself. Okay, we'll go with that then. Is there something you're afraid is going to happen because of waking up at four in the morning? 
what I'm afraid is going to happen is that um, I will lose sleep, that I, uh, uh, you might say on the surface level, uh, I'll lose sleep, I'll be groggy in the morning, I won't be motivated to um, uh, be present in my day. Um, and at a deeper level, um, it seems to go to a core belief, um, a couple of core beliefs. One is self-hatred. Um, so, so just, I'm going to just have you slow down there, Mary. So we'll just, what I heard you say about the fear is that you're going to be tired the next day. Yes. Is that fear? Okay. Yes. Okay, Nicholas, that's fine. We can just move on from there. Thank you, Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so to summarize, when you think about waking up at 4 a.m. in the morning, you feel panic, overwhelm, helplessness, fear. Uh, you blame yourself and you're afraid that I will be tired the next day. Is this summary correct? Yes, and it's, it goes deeper. I'm afraid that God isn't really there for me. Okay, so let's just go ahead and go with the, the, the fear initially is that you're going to be tired, and then we're going to move now into the belief part of it. So it right. seems like you already are, uh, there are several beliefs that this is bringing up for you, so we can go into that in this section. So... All of this proves you're right about a negative belief you have about yourself, others, or the world. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So when you think about waking up at four in the morning, what negative belief feels true to you? And you've already started talking about some of them, so why don't you go ahead and just Go back through the list that you have already come up with. Okay. That God is not there for me. Uh, before we put them down, Nicholas, let, let me just hear everything that you have, that you've already been exploring, Mary, in terms of beliefs. Okay. Are, mm -hmm. uh, that there's unworthiness. How so? Um, that I'm, that I'm not worthy to hear the voice of God. How does that, how do you make the connection between the, the waking up at four and the not hearing the, the voice or hear or feeling a connection? Well, I feel like I should know better that I should be able to overcome this. And I realize to some degree that that's coming from my ego. And I think it's a resistance. It's a huge resistance to letting go of my own, you know, determination to do it by myself. Uh, Nicholas, can you put on uh, Mary's picture on the screen, on a bigger screen so I can see her? Because I'm just with that little... Okay, great. Thank you. So <laughs> good. So talk about what else comes up for you with this 4 a.m. because it sounds like there's you've had it happen quite a bit and there's many beliefs. Is there anything else besides what you've just described? Fear that I that in spite of the work I do and my devotion, that I'm not gonna break through this. Um a sense of hopelessness and um, powerlessness. Hmm. It's like I should know better. I, I know the tools. I have stuff beside my bed. This wonderful um, morning prayer that, that Kirsten uh, uh, posted, I read, but somehow I'm still waking up and it's like, um, I can't seem to break through it. And it feels like it's, um, 
it's partly dismantling. I mean, I can intellectualize it, but um, it feels like it's got me. And uh, to varying degrees, it's a little bit different every morning. But um, there's this fear and level of anxiety. Mm. Does it happen every single morning? Yes, almost. Uh -huh. And um, do you have to work during the day, or is there some reason that you have to be up early after this, when you wake up at 4 a.m.? I'm fairly newly retired um, for, for about two years now. So no, I do not have to get up and go to work the next day. Mm. Mm. So when you, what do you do when you wake up at 4 a.m.? What is your kind of, do you just lay there and toss and turn, or are you up, or what, what, what happens when you wake up at 4 a.m.? I, um, I go into prayer. I think it was Nicholas was talking earlier. I uh, can't remember who about this kind of coming from a place of desperation. God, please help me. Uh, Jesus, please help me. Um, so I'm, and I, I will sometimes go over a lesson and, and, uh, and, uh, you know, have a desire to be in that silent space. Um, however, and sometimes that works, um, at just learning to still my mind, uh, <laughs> major, <laughs> um, uh, yeah. And, and sometimes I toss and turn, even though I'm doing these things always, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm praying or I'm, I'm going over a lesson in the course. Um, sometimes I toss and turn and sometimes I'm able to uh, accept what is there, open to it and relax and let it all go and go back to sleep. Mm -hmm. So, so what are your inspirations and what are the things that, um, that really like spark you just in terms of maybe your spiritual path, of course, miracles, you know, now that you're retired, like, what do you, what, what is your inspiration? Like, what, what is your joy? Can you, when, when you're doing these certain things, you feel like you, you lose track of time and space and self and are there any places that you have or things that um, that you do that that give you that feeling oh yes oh yes um the course i've been a student of the course for many years um and, however it's been a self a self-study course for me and i have felt um i started the course in the mid 80s and there have been various times when i've been able to connect with others but for the most part it's been fairly um, there's not been that joining um, with others. So the joining, I mean, these right now online, and I've, I've done, uh, what, three out of four, and I'm signed up for the next online retreat, this joining, the, uh, <laughs> and I remember, Andy, I'm going to call you out here. <laughs> in, in a good way, in a good way. And, um, but Andy had posted something online on 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 one of the Facebook pages and I just immediately responded. He had just posted it and uh, I'm like, wow, that really so resonates with me. Thank you for posting that. And right after I posted that, I just had this overwhelming heart burst of energy. So I'm like on the keyboard, Andy, was that you? <laughs> he said, yes. And I'm like, oh, thank you. That was so beautiful. <laughs> So it, uh, it's just another, another, another um, testimony to that connection, to that oneness. And when I get in touch with that, then all the rest of it disappears. Um, however, for some reason, um, there's this thing going on that um, I, I can't seem to let go of. Right. So I just wanted to, just based on everything that you've said and um, just that you've tried some different spirits and mind tools to, to move through this, like even introducing this thought in the mind that you need a certain amount of time to sleep every night mm -hmm. in order to be happy. Does, mm -hmm. that, does that resonate with you? Like, do you feel, have you been raised in that way that you think you need to have a certain amount of time to sleep every night in order to be happy? Excuse me. Yeah, I realize it's fairly body oriented, but it is also a belief um, because 
you know, I've been a doer, blah, blah, blah. And I've always been very active. Um, so it's like, now I'm like, I'm retired nine hours of sleep. I need, and so I look at my body and when I get more sleep, I feel so much better. Right. Yes. So it's a belief. Yeah. That Say that again, that last part. A belief in the need for a certain number of hours of sleep based on yeah. my, how, my, how I feel during the day, that, based on how my body feels. It's body. Yeah. What can I say? <laughs> yeah, right. And I know that you've done the mind tools because you've said that you've used them a lot. And one of the things that, it, you know, we, we think that what's happening to us out on the perceptual screen is, you know, it's happening to us. You know, we don't get enough sleep and then we're feeling tired and groggy and we can't really function but you know what the course is telling us and you know what the levels of mind is showing us is that it's actually there's a belief in the mind that's generating you know these these thoughts and these feelings and then a perception that it seems to be about you know not getting enough sleep and waking up early you know waking up at 4 a.m and then feeling like that's the reason why you feel the way that you do, but you know, it's like this invitation of, okay, there seems to be a, a deeply rooted belief uh, in that. And I, I mean, I can say that growing up that I've had that same thing, you know, well, I need to have eight hours of sleep or at least seven hours of sleep to be able to uh, function well the next day, but it keeps like sort of getting questioned or, or being brought up for, for question. And uh, David's sitting here in the audi audience here at the studio, and, and he's just reminding me of this movie that we have in our MWGE collection called Passengers, where uh, the main character, she's a, 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 the woman, is like, so she is it basically going to another planet, and she's been put to sleep uh, for like 30 years, and and somebody wakes her up early, you know, so she has another whatever, 28 years to go. And she's so angry that this person has woke her up from, you know, this 30 year sleep, you know, it's like, how dare you, you know, how dare you do this to me, you know, and so there's this incredible anger. And even in your situation, it's like, wow, I, I see that there is such a, attachment to this belief of that I, I need to have a certain amount of sleep that I need to be able to, you know, sleep through the night into whatever the morning to be able to, to be happy. So, mm -hmm. so this is a good one for us to all look at together, actually. And I'll just have Nicholas take us back to the, um, the uh, Spiri session so that we can look at this belief. And I'm just going to um, introduce a possibility that the, the, the belief is that I, I need um, to get uh, more sleep in the night. Okay. So, so Mary, how many hours do you think you need? Eight. Okay. I need eight hours of sleep a night. Okay, we can just click on yes there, Nicholas. It's just summarizing what the negative belief is that we are looking at. So Mary, since you don't like the way you feel, are you ready to consider the possibility that the way you perceive this upset is not the way it really is? Yes, most definitely. Okay. So everything works together for your good, yes. Mary. Yes. You you only feel uh, panic, overwhelm, and helplessness and fear because 
because blaming yourself and fearing that I will be tired the next day, mirror back to your mind the belief that I need eight hours of sleep at night, which you have denied from your awareness. And that's why you need your mighty companions to help help you sometimes. <laughs> yes, thank you. So are you willing to look at waking up at 4 a.m. in the morning from a different perspective? <sighs> yes, I am. Mm. That's good that you had a, a hesitancy there. You want to make sure that, that your yeses are yeses and your noes are noes. <laughs> <laughs> So, so through the ego's distorted lens, you believe the cause and resolution of this upset are outside of you. Yes. Meaning you feel like you need to sleep longer. This is a mind trick and only the ego's attempt to distract you from looking within your own mind. Hmm. Yeah. Do you want to learn that there's a way that you can, without guilt, see the part you play in all of this so that you can do something about it? We, and Nicholas highlighted without guilt so you can see that it isn't to make you feel guilty about it. Oh, well, that would be great. That would be awesome. Okay. Without guilt, okay. Without guilt it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, glad to hear that. Now I'm going to let you in on a little secret that can change everything for you. You think waking up at 4 a.m. in the morning is why you feel panic, overwhelm, helplessness, and fear, but it's really because you're believing something that isn't true. Mm. Yes. Um, the belief that I need eight hours of sleep at night isn't true. This is what Spiri is asking you to open up to, because if you can actually get in touch with the fact that it's the belief that's generating the, the feelings, you know, it's really, it's the game changer. So believing I need eight hours of sleep at night is the real reason you feel panic, overwhelm, helplessness, fear, when you think about waking up at 4 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, I noticed that there's some resistance to that, um, and so I'd like to speak it. Yes. Okay. Um, it's it almost <laughs> it almost seems too simple that that <laughs> my panic. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> it almost seems too simple that um, all of this panic and overwhelm and freaking out at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> is based on some blankety blank belief that, <laughs> <laughs> sorry everybody uh, that that i need eight hours of sleep it's like oh, she did about this <laughs> that, that that that's Keep too going. simple okay so <laughs> um yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm willing i'm willing to be open to this <laughs> <laughs> David's here saying that uh, uh, Kirsten had tons of beliefs around this, this same thing that you're bringing up around this need for a certain amount of sleep or needing to sleep. And so there's just tons, uh, you know, in the mind, tons of beliefs in the mind about this very thing. And, and, you know, it's like even getting in touch with who is it that is there saying, you, you're so stupid, didn't, you know, this is such a simple thing, you know, who's saying that, <laughs> you know, because a lot of people have this belief, actually, and it's so good that you're willing to, like, bring it up with the group here today so that we can all look at it together and move through it together. Well, thank you. Yeah. Okay, Nick, let's, let's go back to the um, Spiri session, and we'll just get to... We're, we're on our way. We've just passed third and we're on our way home <laughs> using baseball terminology. So we can just continue because sometimes when we just get in touch with what you've just got in touch with Mary, it's like allowing this processing of it. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just a, a cup. You've just been a belief has just been flipped. So now it's just a bit of disorientation. Yeah. 
So feeling panic, overwhelm, helplessness, and fear seems valuable and justifiable when waking up at 4 a.m. in the morning <laughs> isn't what you wanted. <laughs> yes. So, so what is it that you wanted instead? I want to <laughs> sleep through the night. I want peace of mind. Okay, I, sleep through the night. We can <laughs> we'll go through that. Just sleep through the night. Because <laughs> that's really what we what you want, you know, in this scenario. Okay. So here's what's really going on. We're going to just summarize. If you believe that you need eight hours of sleep at night, you'll naturally want to sleep through the night <laughs> to be happy and at peace. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, it's a huge expectation here. So um, yes, it's correct. Just uh, summarizing the desire here. Okay, and just basically a high five, Mary, for going through this session together. And then given what you know now, Mary, uh, do you want to hold on to this desire to sleep through the night or do you want to choose peace of mind? And there's no wrong answers, really. Oh, yeah, I've been through it before. I'm just looking deep. Mary, you know, do you really want peace of mind or what are you doing here? <laughs> so I'm just looking. Uh, uh. We need that game show music. Da, 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 da. <laughs> oh, yeah, Jeopardy. <laughs> It's interesting that what comes up, uh, I, and I, if I'm taking too much time, let me know. What comes up is that, um, you know, if I let this go, then I have to really let go of my resistance. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a part of me that's screaming and kicking and yelling, no, yeah. you know, I want to hang on to this. And then there's another part of me that's, that's like a flood when I let go of that, and therefore, everything flips. Right. Yeah. So just even if you want, if, you know, no pressure of making a decision around that now, but if, if you wanted to, at this point, just click on Keep Desire, there's some beautiful videos that will uh, come up for you to actually look at and um, to, you know, really go deeper in why, you want to keep the desire, you know, because uh, you've probably had it, you know, for lifetimes. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a very deeply rooted belief in sleep. And now it's being, you know, you're being asked um, to whether or not you want to let it go. I just got a, an email because people can give feedback on Spiri. And uh, this email that I got from somebody at the end of their session was the question of, you know, she wanted a partner and she, she sent the feedback. Well, I want a partner, you know, so did she want peace of mind or did she want a partner? <laughs> she wants a partner. So it's like, okay, at least you know now what it is that, you know, you're being asked to, to let go of if you really want peace of mind, you know, but it's like the spirit's just going to wait, you know, until, till you're ready. Yeah. Well, like it feels like everything's kind of moving around. And it's like, I don't want to, it's almost as if I don't want to speak it right now. I want to be with it because, and I'll take some quiet time um, because it is shifting. And so that's awesome. Thank you. Ah, uh, that's so beautiful. Thank you for sharing your process with us, Mary. I mean, really, this is very deep work that we're doing together and you know you just remembering that you're not in this alone like yeah. we're all praying for you you know whatever your decision is that you know that this is your call of your heart is is what what this feeling is and the ego is going to kick and scream every step of the way <laughs> yes so, yeah yes thank you thank you. you thank you okay <sighs> 
All right, everyone. Well, thanks. And I'll see you in three weeks. Um, just really keep working, Spiri, and questioning your thoughts. It's what it's all about. Okay, thank you. <laughs> oh, wow. Thank you, guys. It's very vibrant right here in the studios now with like we've got David here and oh yeah, it's just wonderful. We're also with you, Mary. Thank you for your transparency and your vulnerability. And this is really what it's all about. And um, yeah, just one belief at a time. We just go deeper and deeper and deeper. And well, yeah, really just appreciative. So I think I just want to take this opportunity to mention that um, we will be on again with this round of shows in three weeks. And if you're wanting to continue questioning your beliefs and going deeper and you're wanting to do that in a space where there's mighty companions and, you know, um, an online container like this, we do have an online retreat coming up um, May 4th through the 6th. So I think that's next week. Yes. And um, it's going to be on divine providence, which... Um, can sometimes be honed down into the realm of money, but truly it's, it's such a vast experience and can relate to so many different things. Really, it's just the experience of being very cared for in every moment. So it uh, really just pertains to absolutely anybody that, that wants to learn more about how to feel truly cared for in every moment. So um, yeah, just in the spirit of what you're seeing here with the, the way that the mind tools work and the way that your mighty companions are so helpful in going deeper, I just heartily invite everyone to check it out if they're feeling a spark for, for joining in this way. So, oh, you can find that on our event page <laughs> in case you're looking. So um, let's see, we've got a, another show coming up. You, of course, have noticed perhaps that Susan isn't here. Susan's coming up in about 10 minutes with her show Leap, where she'll take us into the realm of quantum. And um, we'll see you soon. <laughs> that I knew like the masters could understand everybody no matter what language they were speaking and that if it was an infinite symphony you could always understand each other no matter whether you're speaking Chinese right if you're in the infinite symphony because it's a symphony of harmony it's a harmonious collaboration where everyone understands each other and we're all perfectly equal right so this is like the musical form of language disconnecting time and space gone away continental reconnection no more no more split, no more race, right? Like bees love a swarming, feel the sound, you can't delay. At ease, it's all around you, it's in and out. At last release, at last released. 
Okay? So it's like that whole vibration of being released into the infinite symphony and not having to struggle to commune, right? Whether it's a language barrier, energy barrier, no barriers, right? <clears throat> you know, I was studying the music of the spheres at the time, and I was thinking of how the masters like Beethoven and all those cats, you know, what must they have been experiencing? I'm not a musician. You know, when I first started to hear it, I didn't know how to play guitar or sing or anything. I just taught myself everything. A lot of the times I don't have any idea what I'm playing. So, um, but I would contemplate these things, you know? <laughs> so this is, this is what it sounded like to me, right? Welcome to the unknown, above the battleground, where all is released and realized. This is the state for the living, not the dead. When all is forgiven, we transcend into the divine abyss of creation. Freedom and joy await our return. Deep within the mind, there is a place where the kingdom of heaven is known. Very still and quiet am I, watching observing the never-changing reality of who I am. Welcome to the Tabula Rossa Mystery School, where you will awaken to what has never not been. of luxury has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. We just want to get our car. Take the blue key, you go back to the luxury you know. You take the red key and you'll never look at luxury the same again. This is unreal. It's very real. This is what luxury looks like. And this is what it sounds like. Nessun dorma, ma il mio mistero è chiuso in me.
Okay, welcome back again, everyone. We're headed over to Susan now with her show, Leap. Hi, everyone. I'm back. I'm feeling this nervousness coming up, so I just want to <laughs> need to say that. Sometimes it can just help to help to expose it. <sighs> yeah, it's funny because a few days ago, I was like just really in prayer around what what the topic was going to be for the show, and I was actually back and forth in my mind, even if I wanted to even do the show today. And so what came in was initially was this idea of time. I, oh, I thought I'll do the, the, that would be the focus of the show. And then it turns out that wasn't it. It came in later that felt, felt much more obvious to me that, yeah, that I wanted to talk about entanglement. And, and then again, when that, when I saw that, it was more like, oh, but I didn't, I didn't know what to say. <laughs> so, so I feel like all week, like a little bit by bit, the spirit has been feeding me little pieces of what, what I'm supposed to talk about today. So, so yeah, I think at, at this stage, maybe I'll just, just start by saying, um, cause I do have a clip that I want to show in a minute, but it really goes over you know, you could say the, what the quantum physicists have found um, about what entanglement is, which is this discovery of what's happening in this kind of microscopic, subatomic level of the universe that shows, um, yeah, basically shows what, what, what entanglement is. So maybe we'll I think we'll just start with the clip and, and we'll take it from there. So Nicholas, if you want to, you want to let it roll. Oh, and by the way, this is from, um, this is from the movie, what, what the bleep it's Dr. Quantum. So it's nice, nicely animated for, I think for ease of, of, you know, reception in, in a certain way. So. Um, yeah, so he doesn't, he doesn't go into a lot of the science or anything behind that, but the, like there, there's a part of actually what he said, Dr. Quantum was, is actually really baffling to the intellect. We can't really understand it at all because there's no real laws of the universe that explain it. So it, in a certain way, you have to like, you have to just kind of um, look at this and, and trust that if you can't grapple it with your intellect, that's okay. <laughs> that, that just this idea that, that particles can be linked like instantaneously, um, no matter how far apart they are. So they don't, they're not subject to the rules of, you know, how long it would take for communication to happen from one to another. They don't, they don't care. They're actually totally outside of the system in a way. They, they just kind of act in these ways like this that that really you know throw everything up into you know everything is up now for for question really um, because if things can can do that then you know obviously we're extremely wrong about what we think is going on <laughs> so and I think I I really love that about about this because I I spent so many years in science and using Newtonian science as my way to know something. And I just really, that was my, like my, my religion in a way, like that was my way to understand the world, understand myself, understand it all. And that when, when this started to come in and enter my awareness, so to speak, it was like, was, you know, like it was, it's telling me that, that I had it all wrong. And that, you know, which is an assault to the, to the ego, <laughs> but, but in a way it's, it's really refreshing because it's, it's sort of started to open my mind to something, something much different. So, so yeah. And then actually after I, I, I felt good about this clip and showing it, I was looking through some other, just online one night, just a few days ago, and I was looking through some clips and some articles and I landed on this experiment that was done just a few years ago and it was also an entanglement experiment 
And what they found was not only can, can this sort of thing happen across space, but it can also happen with time. In other words, they were able to entangle particles that were separated in time, you know, so they had different, you could say, points in time, and they were totally connected. They were completely outside of the rules of time. But also, they were doing it with particles that didn't even coexist in time. <laughs> like, in other words, it was like, you know, I don't know how to, a uh, um, another way of putting it is if I'm deeply connected with someone who isn't even, who I, who I have no overlap in this lifetime with. And so, so it really shouldn't happen. It shouldn't be possible at all, it, it, according to what we believe is true. And so, so yeah, I was blown, I was blown away by that. And then I, yeah, I was, I was also really in prayer about wanting the spirit to show me what this all means, like in, in the spiritual journey. So, and I, I, like I wanted an experience of it. I wanted to really feel in my heart, like I, I understood something about what this meant. I didn't want it to just be about experiments. And so last night we had, Ken had mentioned, was it Ken? Yeah, had mentioned earlier that there was a movie gathering we had last night. And I was sitting watching this movie. And um, what happened during the movie was, was really actually interesting because there was different sharings. Like David had shared some and then Jason had shared some about their experience with their father um, or their grandfather. In their, in their lifetime and just some healing work that, that was happening and some forgiveness work that was happening. In their lifetime. And I was feeling kind of bad because I had this feeling that I had more forgiveness work to do with my father who had passed away two years ago. And I thought, oh, maybe it's, you know, water under the bridge. Maybe there's nothing more I can do. And then during the gathering, I, at one point after Jason actually shared some healing experience with his father, I felt this rush of, of love coming from my, what, what I thought <laughs> was like my father. <laughs> and it just felt really strong like it was him and then and then it actually felt even bigger than that like it felt like I was being shown these ways that he had been kind of loving me and loving me and loving me but I didn't necessarily see it that way at the time but that the love was, was always there, you know, like that, that was the message, was that it didn't go away. <sighs> now I try, keep talking here, but back to, <laughs> I don't know how to feel, it felt really like obvious to me afterwards, after the, sh the, the, the movie talk and after, this upwell of emotion that the spirit was just trying to show me something about this entanglement business that 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 entanglement is talking about basically a collapse of time and a collapse of space that that when there's forgiveness it's just the it's like it's just the love or something that's that's left there it's, it's just a perception that there was a separation, it was like a, like a trick or something. And that, yeah, the experience that I had was like just showing me in a, in a deeper way that no, you, that love actually never went away. It never, it didn't actually go away even if you thought it did. You, you were just covering it over with some kind of a story, you know, to convince you you're I don't know what, separate, different roles, different people. I don't, like a, a lot of stories. 
there. And so, and so that was really the experience I was, I was looking for. That was, that was the, somehow the, the deeper message for me was, was that. And so, yeah. And so I just wanted to, I wanted to share that, but I also, there was also just this recognition that, that, you know, I don't want to overuse the word, but this, this idea of entanglement is kind of always there. Like it's, it's always this, the spirit is, is kind of frequently showing me that there isn't the separation that I think there is that, you know, that things just seem to happen and they don't make any sense. Like, you know, I'll have someone in my mind and then boom, someone else will, will come in and mention them. And it's just at, in that moment, like it actually happened this morning. And I, and then the, when that happened, it was more like, oh, that's really cool. But it also seemed to fit with, you know, it was, it was practical. Like it was like, you know, it was, it helped, you know, with some decision making that needed to happen really quickly this morning. And, you know, so it was like the spirit was using that in a way that, that felt really, that really felt really helpful. And yeah. And I, yeah, I also feel like because my mind has has always been so scientific and in that logical kind of way i felt i feel like the spirit has often brought in symbols for me that that showed me this illusion of separation you could say that um that i've needed a lot of persuading and and the one of the examples that just came to mind was with a cat that i used to have um named hazel and Hazel was really cool because what she would do is she would pre kept predicting over and over my next step. Like, so I'd be in the kitchen and I would go to do something and I'd look and Hazel would just be sitting there waiting before I did it. So, and then it would just keep happening over and over again. And it was almost like, and I just kept <laughs> like, what the heck? Like, it just didn't make any sense. And I just kept seeing how, oh, like there's something, there's something way, way bigger going on here that I can't make any sense of and and maybe I don't need to make any sense of it so so yeah um yeah and then I I also was um was looking at well, I do have a, actually another another clip that I wanted to show um, that was basically right right in line with this that we've been talking about. You know, just how the Holy Spirit really wants to keep persuading and persuading us in all these different subtle ways that there isn't this this illusion. Sorry, there is, stepping back that there isn't this this you know fragmentation or this this perception of separation that we we think there is that we we're very convinced that there is um but to the logical mind it it's like i said it's very persuasive and so so there there is a lot of there is a lot of like you know um there's a lot of steps that that need to happen in terms of guidance to be brought in to to be shown just how again how wrong wrong we are about what we think is going on so um so I'm, when i was looking at it this morning and this was from a course in miracles <laughs> there was yeah there's a section here in under the power of holiness um in chapter 16 that says there is a tendency to fragment and then to be concerned about the truth of just a little part of the whole and this is but a way of avoiding or looking away from the whole so what you think you might be better able to understand or yeah, to what you think you might be better better able to understand for this is but another way in which you would still try to keep understanding to yourself. And then, and then Jesus brings miracles into it <laughs> because it's really through the miracle that we are able to 
experience this collapse of, of time and see beyond the veil, as it were, of perception to experience the truth behind the image of, of what we think is real. So a, far and, a better and far more helpful way to think about miracles is this. You do not understand them either in part or in whole, yet they have been done through you. Therefore, your understanding cannot be necessary, yet it is still impossible to accomplish what you would un not understand. And so there must be something in you that does understand. Hmm. Yeah, so. So maybe just going with that and just sort of this invitation again to to be okay with not understanding, not understanding what miracles are and not even understanding what any of with this quantum physics stuff, how it really works. Um, that it's okay, it's, it's, there's, it's almost like a, a, a degree of faith is needed because these were discoveries, these are discoveries in science. And I feel like when I look at this stuff that I just keep, needing to be okay with not understanding understanding it all so so yeah i think i'll maybe i'll i'll bring in the clip first i'll, I'll set it up a little bit this is taken from um, a movie that came out a number of years ago called waking life and um, it basically is a it's a movie about this this young man who um, keeps um, waking up into what he thinks is, is his life, you know, but it turns out he finds out along the way that he's still dreaming. So he would go back to bed and then he would wake up again and he, he would be back at it. He would be back into what he realizes is a, is a dream and, and that um, part of his exploration in, in the movie is going around and just talking to people and trying to understand how he can wake up for good because he wants to wake up and he's tired of this kind of cycling around of, of waking up into what is, is just a dream. So, so this is kind of a famous scene um, that, that we'll play and it gonna, it's going to just um, talk more about how, you know, you know, how this business of time is is not what we think it is and that you know hearkening back to the the concept of entanglement just how entangled things might really be you know at that basic basic level so yeah if nicholas you want to go ahead and, and play that Yeah, I just, I realized I stopped it just slightly too soon there. What, what he goes on to say was, was that um, this is the narrative of everyone's life, that everyone is just constantly saying no to, to, the, to the truth out of fear. And, but the truth is always there. The, the kingdom of heaven is always at hand. So um, we say no until we're ready to say yes. This is how that, how that finished. So, so yeah, I, I felt like that brought back to mind just cop, Captain Doctor, sorry, Doc, Doctor Quantum, and what he was talking about at the beginning—that time and space were just an illusion. In kind of in the face of everything um, being entangled, <laughs> and basically one, that underlying oneness that, um, that is behind the, the image of, of separation or the image of, of somehow it appears so real. And um, when I was looking at all of that, I, I just felt like, well, um, where does the whole Course in Miracles um, 
yeah, where does the whole Course of Miracles tie, tie into this? And so I picked up the course again, and there was another section that... that I just wanted to read from that felt really, felt really appropriate under Changeless Reality. In chapter 30, uh, appearances deceive but can be changed. Reality is changeless. It does not deceive at all. And if you fail to see beyond appearances, you are deceived. For everything you see will change, and yet, you thought it real before, and now you think it real again. Reality is thus reduced in form and capable of change. Reality is changeless and is this that makes it real and keeps it separate from all appearances. It must transcend all form to be itself. It cannot change. Yeah, so I feel like that that's kind of where, where it ended up for me at the end of it was just being shown that any experience of, of a miracle or of a, of a real shift in perception that shows me that I've just been so wrong about what I thought was real is pointing back over and over again to this, this changeless reality, you could say, that's, that's behind everything. And And so, so yeah, I feel like that's, that's just what, where I wanted to end, end the show today. So, so thank you everyone for, <laughs> for joining in. Thank you, Susan. That was wonderful. Yeah, I love what, um, what was being shared with, like it really all boils down to one instant. Like I feel like that just it creates such a focus in my mind. Like I had a funny image when he was saying every instant is just a no to God until we say yes. Like the, the ticking of a clock, like no, 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 until we're ready to just like fully give ourselves over. And I feel like that's where the, again, the practicality of the course comes in. It's like, okay, if I'm going to get very, very present, which is just the, the continuous practice, what's happening for me in this instant? Am I experiencing Am I experiencing a deep love and um, a presence and a real sense of connection with everything, or is there something blocking the way? So I just appreciate as well the, the quantum perspective of it. So thank you so much, Susan. And we've got one final show for today. We've got um, a special feature with um, Jenny and Greg, who have just been pouring their hearts into this new book coming through uh, called This Moment is Your Miracle. How wonderfully fitting this moment is your miracle after what we were just sharing about or talking about. So they'll be back in about 10 minutes or so to um, just do some readings and also just some general sharings and parables from the creation and about the book. So stay tuned. I think this book is designed to give give you a, a tool that can be used by the Holy Spirit, higher self, to really burst into an experience, burst into a huge insight that even though linear time seems to be laid on so thick and the unconscious mind seems to be so so filled with false thoughts and false beliefs that it gives you a way to start to navigate quickly, you know, it actually can save a lot of time if you can start to follow and relate to some of these movie parables. You know, there's seven in there in the book and and they're amazing little parables, teaching parables and tools, you know, to help you get into the experience of true healing and true forgiveness. So in that sense it's a very good use of time. Even though time was made by the ego and not created by God, it's 
spirit can really use time in a very useful way to collapse it and to show its impossibility. Yeah, I think that's part of the reason why I really chose to use uh, these parables and these movies because in a way it's it's a it's a way of softly getting swept off your feet and taken into the divine love that you truly are seeing that all that spiritual self-love that Christ love that you are that's what this is all about In this video, we're going to show you how to wake up with movies using MWGE. What we know about the mind is that it doesn't differentiate between the emotions it experiences while watching a movie and the emotions it experiences in day-to-day -day life. And that's how we're able to heal our mind with movies. You first want to pick a movie to watch that supports your spiritual awakening. You can do that using the Emotion Theme Index located under the Reviews drop-down menu. All of the movie reviews on MWGE are indexed by the emotions and main healing themes in the movie. At the top of the index page, we see the eight main index categories of reviews. I have a block that I'm ready to remove from my life. I click on that category and I'm shown all of the block's topics. My issue is that I feel like a victim of the world and I'm ready to heal that belief. I click on victimization and I'm shown all of the reviews that have victimization as one of the healing topics covered in that movie. At this point I'm able to browse through the movie reviews. I'm feeling a resonance with the movie Black Swan so I first want to obtain the movie from a streaming video or DVD rental service. I also want to download the Mind Tools for use during the movie. I can find the Mind Tools under the Getting Started drop-down menu. When I'm ready to watch the movie, I'll read the review first. This helps me to stay focused on the movie's healing themes rather than getting lost in the storyline. Attack it! Come on! While watching Black Swan, I notice upsetting emotions come up when I see the main character, Nina, hurting herself. The upset is my cue to pause the movie and fill out a mind tool. If I can fill out a worksheet when I'm feeling the upset, I have a much better chance of getting it off the perceptual screen where I'm in reaction mode and back into my mind where I can look at what the upsetting emotions are, what the upsetting thoughts are, and what the underlying beliefs are. Beneath all that is the desire to have something different than it is. If I can get down to that place in my mind where I can see that I'm desiring something other than peace, then I can choose again. And the miracle is that I can call upon spirit to help me make that choice for present peace. The Instrument for Peace is another downloadable worksheet that takes you step by step through the process of clearing upsetting emotions. It's especially helpful if you have difficulty or feel resistance moving through any level of the mind when taking an upset back. While filling out a worksheet, you may also uncover other limiting beliefs, so you'll want to fill out as many worksheets as necessary until you feel complete. The power of using these mind tools with the movie reviews on MWGE is that it saves time in the awakening process. Rather than playing out painful dramas in your life, you can simply let the characters on the screen do it for you. With all of the subscription plans, you get the written movie reviews and the mind tools. 
With the ProPop subscription, you also get audio and video setups with many of the movie reviews so that you can go even deeper into the healing themes. With the MasterPop subscription, you also get our library of streaming metaphysical movie classics with commentary, as well as hundreds of clips highlighting the key healing scenes in movies. If you're ready to add some fun to your spiritual practice, subscribe by going to MWGE.org. MWGE is movie watching with a purpose. Hey, welcome back, everyone. <clears throat> so, yeah, we have something, a bit of a shift this week. Uh, you know, I'm happy, happy to announce Jenny and Greg are going to share from, uh, well, first of all, sh share about 
the new book coming out called This Moment is Your Miracle, David's new book. So uh, I don't know what else they're going to be talking about today. So I, I think we'll just, we'll just start with that. So you guys, uh, Jenny and Greg, can take it, take it from here. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. welcome, everyone. Yeah, this moment is your miracle. Hi. The book is as a subtitle called Spiritual Tools to Transcend Fear and Experience the Power of the Present Moment. And we um, thinking we'll have a, um, a short reading that um, is a three minute aspect of segment of the introduction to the book that we like to just welcome the show, welcome the book, welcome the inspiration and the present moment um, with this video. So did you have, so you might be able to get it up soon? It's ready now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This moment is your miracle. Spiritual tools to transcend fear and experience the power of the present moment. An upcoming book by David Hofmeister. This reading is an excerpt from this book and the introduction called The Ever-Present Miracle of Now. There is an answer that is so deep that it can bring truth and healing to everyone and to this whole world. We have been searching for it everywhere, except in the only place we could truly find it, within. This moment extends all the way to eternity. It is the now that extends peace fully and is forever and ever. It is infinite happiness without end, without limit. It is untouched by fear, guilt, or suffering of any kind. It is untouched by anything but love. There is so much appreciation when experiencing something for the first time. There is no comparison. For in the ever unfolding now, we are always brand new. We can just bask in it, fully merge with it. There are no past references to it, for it doesn't fit on the timeline. It's just a happy sense of soaring way beyond time and space, like an ongoing meditation. This ever-present miracle of now is our doorway within. It is our doorway home. It is an experience of something ever new. It's a happy feeling that you want to just sing, sing to the world. It's very beautiful and very simple, too. It's having the allowance to just merge when you are watching a flower or watching a butterfly fly by or a bird singing in the tree. Just the contentment like, ah, yes, thank you, let me be whole. This is what St. Francis was talking about communing, just communing, the allowance that everything is perfect. We can really allow ourselves to smell the roses. Thank you for playing that. Mm. Beautiful. 
So yeah, it's such an inspiration and um, it's just a, it feels like a completion to just be able to share about the book. So I welcome Jenny Donner, my wife, <laughs> collaborator on, I, I was, how do you want to say it, in collaboration on this project for uh, the last year and a half. And uh, I spoke some about this earlier and some of you know, and I, kept coming to me to um, share my experience yesterday because I had this interest in numbers. And we watched a movie on numbers, some what about numbers. And I can, um, it feels inspiring to introduce the book in a little bit of a different way. And I took a count, a word count, on some important words that we need in awakening. Just for those who have never heard about this book, we can just share that it's a compilation um, of David's teachings that we have uh, worked on for a year and a half. And it's been super inspiring, deep, a little bit challenging at times, and really wonderful um, collaboration project. So that's, that's the title of this, this show today. This moment is a miracle. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, just to introduce the book, as Jenny Sharon, the subtitle is Spiritual Tools to Transcend Fear and Experience the Power of the Present Moment. So we just take that and we look at the, the reader that we're addressing, which is the new reader, the reader who doesn't maybe know about A Course in Miracles. Um, and I had kind of fun with this, um, seeing, it was just think about the power of the present moment and what would be the most important word that we could use for this book. Um, and it comes up 405 times. That's roughly um, twice in every page, roughly, because it's just over 200 page, and it's spirit. Spirit, and very early on in the book, David shares about how you know, the answer, the answer, how to get to the present moment is through spirit, by, um, to recognize the spirit in mind. Um, it's like a picture, so spirit, 405 times. Then the word love comes in 261 times. It's more than once every page. And we drop into peace, which comes... 206 times and we drop into a very important chapter in the book called trust that shows up 145 times and then we drop into kind of into the next chapter which is forgiveness or one of the later chapters 107 times um, and then the rest three other words that come in about 100 times is is purpose and joy and within. So when I saw that uh, little picture of the word, the use of the word, that like the whole purpose of the whole book sort of becomes, um, you know, comes a bit more real uh, and simplified. So we also wanted to share too, right in the beginning, about the reader because. Um, the, the work, or the, the different quotes that David had spoken in different talks and things, um, were primarily, um, we were searching for very, very specific and sometimes hard to find, um, language and parables and, um, some terminology that would address maybe an early spiritual seeker. And, and so we, so in, in this process, actually halfway through the book, Jenny and I both had this recognition at one point, actually the whole team, we started to recognize and share more about what this reader was. And we actually had to get into their, their hearts or their minds. And it was, it was a, a remember a specific experience, um, 
uh, of that happening, actually a turn in, in the mind so that we could welcome this reader. And of course, what this really is, is an inner looking at the beginner that's still in me. Um, that's the experience that I had. Um, and it dawned on me this morning too that my younger sister had started communicating with me years ago, actually Jenny and I, and she was struggling with Christianity and she was struggling with some guilt. And um, we both shared the upbringing of, of being Catholic. And, and we, yeah, and so we were able to share some of our experiences with her. And, and that sort of was a, a tie into this whole um, understanding of who, we're, who the book is being um, directed towards. So, and I thought that Jenny could also share her experience of, of that, like when that shift happened and we, um, we knew we had to go much deeper into this um, audience that we were um, looking for uh, in, in, the, in the teachings. So did you have any particular, did you have an experience? We, well, that, I guess for that, me, I, I feel like I was, mm -hmm. I was the reader. I was, because mm -hmm. uh, when, when this project came into our hands, we were told or uh, the feeling was that this book would be for a new spiritual seeker, uh, probably a Christian, probably somebody who hasn't been uh, into a lot of spirituality and uh, retreats or ashrams or things like that. Just someone who is, you know, starting this path of discovering the self or who who we are and and i think um for me just because he was a christian they probably has a christian background um i felt oh that's exactly who i was and and i felt very inspired to to do something to bring the message to to those people um because i know how it was for me so actually even couple of little parables in the book is is from me and from my experience of facing the guilt and facing the fear and facing the the problem with christianity and and leaving christianity behind um yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so <laughs> took my questions and I took them away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can ask them anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as you're sharing that, I shared a little bit about my experience of the the early reader, but and my connection to that, and then Jenny um, had this, yeah, this inspiration to share small little parables from her life. Um, particularly remember fear and guilt and no private thoughts. Those were big chapters, um, important chapters uh, to explain and share about, especially in this context, because you know, there's, I know for me, even growing up, there was an unwinding from the guilt. And so, do you wanna share a little bit about that, those parables or, how how it's been for you to use those parables and to put them into the book into the context of the metaphysics and also through uh, in the context of David's teachings. <laughs> I don't know if I can. I, I feel very uh, I feel a little bit spaced out, in, and I um, I I would like to go into the present moment the the title of the book yeah. uh, and the ever present miracle of now which is the answer to everything and because earlier today i had a wonderful call with with suzanne and suzanne sullivan and um we talked about this belief in a price to pay for salvation and and i think i felt that um i'm so grateful for the learning that there is no price to pay mm -hmm. but I see how many beliefs I and others have that we have to do something for salvation. We have to, 
accomplish or do something right, to be a good boy or a good girl, you know, all the time is this to do. Even in meditation, we try to, to meditate well, to come to an experience of peace, and it's always this future idea. So Susanna and I talked about how this, um, the problem with, with meditation even, the future goal when the present moment is always offering this peace mm -hmm. and rest and it's almost like we have a manic uh, ad addict in our mind that is like addicted to um, hardship or that there should be a price to pay there should be some you know difficulty to overcome or mm -hmm. some hardship to and it must be that we want it, that the mind kind of wants that sort of habit, which is a bit sick. It's like a sick addiction. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think I, I read that piece from the book together with Calico last time when I was here. And um, yeah, the belief that there is a price to pay, and which then leads to fear of God and then leads to sickness and physical symptoms or all kinds of things like that. It was, yeah, very inspiring this morning. I took some notes, but... Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we would also, it's a really cool experience to be able to from David's talks um, that address the present moment in you know of course we, we wove it into the fabric of the whole book and so we would find uh, areas of um, you know how does guilt keep you know keep us from the present moment or the I know mind you know and talking about that in the first chapter which is uh, judgment and knowledge and that was uh, pretty miraculous um, because early on, the early on stages were um, sometimes you know, we just we were looking at just getting great teachings or, or um, finding um, something very deep about the topic, and we had to pull back and find areas where David spoke about the present moment in those topics or chapters. So, um, so it's really this unified experience of bringing the present moment even through um, all the different chapters, the 17 chapters. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And the undoing of the doer, the, the doer can be the meditator or the, the one that is, you know, if we're trying to, trying hard to reach some other place or state or um, the doer is involved. And we did talk about the doer in the book too. And I love how we can let spirit use the doer, you know, instead of stopping doing any, everything and anything, we can let the Holy Spirit use the doer. And so that's addressed in the book and, and this, in this whole ministry too. Like we, we let the spirit use the doer until it's undone. <laughs> yeah. 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 And one of my notes says, if you have that doer and you use it for purpose, <laughs> you know, use it for your own healing and forgiveness. I feel we have some amazing parables in the book too, but like fun. We may read a passage, I'm not sure, but like we talked about relationship this morning and I kind of scrolled um, randomly in the book and the chapter that came up was relationship. And then Greg came and said, I feel we should bring up relationship. Or you said maybe you were resistant to it. <laughs> it was, 
I noticed my eyes not going quite to that area. I was uh, looking around it, so that's what I said. And maybe that means to go where we don't want to, where I don't want to go. Right. Yeah. Because the the parable that came in for me in that chapter is the the Pango parable. Oh, yeah, that's very good. (laughs) David shows about how how the slicing through the air. Yeah, the the dance tango (laughs) is so passionate, but it it's so emotional and strong and like there is a bit of I could kill you in there in the dance because it's slicing and dicing and you know the they're very firm and very sharp and very fast and the movements uh, so it's very passionate and strong and it's symbolic of the special relationship you can almost say the special hate or the switches to special love relationship that can be very uh, very intense and very passionate to um, and uh, murderous at times. I think we even took a few words out of there because we thought it was a little bit too strong. <laughs> I can read that paragraph. Sure. Yeah. So this is about the special love relationship, moving towards holy relationship. Yeah, a little section called moving towards holy relationship. I actually read the little bit paragraph before it. It's a blessing that we can use all relationships to see where we need healing of our minds and where we still have grievances, even in a special relationship. Spirit, when invited in, can help us see and guide us in what must be released in our mind through watching what our partner is mirroring back to us. One time, some friends took me to watch professional tango. The dancers were slicing through the air, enacting all the drama of relationships. The reason why they slice so fast is there's all kinds of relationship-related pattern, passion, and emotions in this dance. There's even a history of murder associated with it. So under that slicing, There's a little bit of, I could kill you. Their faces are very expressive and very dramatic. There's a lot of the drama and the trauma of special relationships under those whisking bodies cutting through the air. Everybody on earth can relate to the intense emotions in relationships. The ego gets flushed out of its unconscious hiding place and it comes up onto the surface, and it is vicious. What a passion! What was passion and romance and attraction easily turns into hatred? A Course in Miracles has nine chapters dedicated to special relationships. Just read this last little bit. In special relationships in this world, it slips back and forth between. I love you, I love you, I love you, I could kill you. The rage and the passion are a razor blade's width apart, so close. It's, if that's the case, how can special relationships become the means to enlightenment, to spiritual awakening? It is through forgiveness in day-to-day living We can be grateful to all the people in our life because they reveal our grievances to us. Yeah. So that question is interesting. How can how can special relationships be the means to enlightenment if they are that intense? You know? And that's, that's a good question to ask. And that's, that is the work, that is the forgiveness like, that we need to go through. And, and um, you know, the question is, why do we seek them? Why do we seek, why are we attracted to those relationships? Well, because we are, we need to work with it. We, you know, we may not know why we, we want this, but it's like, Okay, this is what we need to work with. And the whole world is a special relationship. It's not just couples, you know, that can, can be very intense with couples, but 
can be very intense with families. Families usually lots of specialness uh, in their attraction to certain aspects that we um, project mm. as our families and uh, yeah. Yeah. There's a few minutes left. Yeah, we have a few minutes left. We, we could also read a little bit from the conclusion. Yeah. Or we could say that, um, <laughs> that yeah, there's been no, there's been no, um, yeah, shortage of, of being able to you know, witness what's in my mind, you know, through in my relationship with Jenny. So, and it's, yeah, it's, um, it's very powerful and it's very deep and yeah, I'm grateful to be able to, yeah, just be able to much more often now be able to release the, the grievance and um, finding it happens quicker. And it, uh, yeah, it really comes back to forgiving myself. And I think the deeper I've gone with this relationship, you know, for us and it's it's seems to come back more and more to me and this this grievance that uh, is internal to my own being or to God um, which yeah can show up too um, so yeah it feels like there's a very much much more of a grateful space that I, I feel so I've come to some gentler waters and internally um, for sure. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So I want to read the last paragraph of the conclusion. And um, what was it like an hour before we turned in the final draft? The, you know, the, this is the final, final draft. Um, I found a course quote um, that seemed to be perfect. It sort of brought in the present moment, it brought in the miracle, um, and it brought in the, the, the context of the whole book, which was really pretty cool. So hopefully it has that impact. Um, so it's just a short paragraph, and then the, the last thing is a quote from A Course in Miracles. By the way, these are probably going to be edited too, so, you know, they're not, it's not, so if there's some grammatical errors, you know, it's like it's not set in stone. <laughs> so we now, we have now found that we can trust that there is a real purpose for everything which results in joy, spirit, and peace of mind. This is the mystical experience of healing and awakening. There are no consequences to letting go of illusions. Only this glorious experience of what is real and what is natural in this very moment. Go through the void and come into the allness of being. The means is the miracle. Now we arise in joy for dramas and games have ended. Never need they be summoned again into awareness. Be glad for their passing and remember the gift that forgiveness offered. 
the blanket of peace softly spreads across the earth and we rest in a tranquil mind that remains invulnerable forever. This is the course. For a miracle is now. It stands already here in present grace within the only interval of time that fear has overlooked, but which is all there is to time. So, thank you, thank everyone, you very for much. Us. Wonderful so to much. join with you here. Yeah, this show. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's so rich. I just want to say something about it because it's, the spirit is so vast and rich and it's just not contained in words for me. I just, yeah. So it's really wonderful to join in that experience, in that presence. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you, Jenny and Greg. Thank you. It's been beautiful to hear about the way that the book has just been coming to this very, you know, like all the, the milestones and everything, but you guys just had a really beautiful checkpoint where something very large just got submitted. And so we've been, we've had the good fortune or the, um, what's the word? Privilege. That's the word. Thanks, Jason. To um, be able to just be hearing some of the chapters from it and some of the parables. So. And um, I'd love to share as well that Jenny and Greg are going to be starting some traveling and um, towards the, the end of May. And they're headed down to Peru, which is where Jeff is. Hi, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they've got a retreat lined up in Lima on May 25th through the 27th. Yeah, that did, those dates are right. And um, possibly doing some other retreats and touring through some other South American countries. So if you're interested in details about the Lima event, you can watch our event page, which is livingmiracles.org slash events. And you can also contact Jeff, who is the contact for that event. Jeff, maybe you can put your email in the chat there so that people can contact you if they need to. And um, stay tuned into that event page as well for a possible retreat in Sao Paulo, Brazil, coming up in June. So that's June 15th through June 17th and um, possibly some events coming in Guatemala as well. So stay tuned for uh, the updates on Jenny and Greg's travels. Well, thank you everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Susan, for joining me. Yeah, thank you, Kristen. It's thank you, everybody. It just feels amazing, really. <laughs> and thank you, Jenny and Greg as well for sharing. Yeah. So just another reminder, we won't be broadcasting these live shows next week. We'll be having our Awakening from the Dream monthly online retreat. So that's May 4th through May 6th. So if you'd like to join in somehow virtually, they're just fantastic. If you've not tried them out, look, they're just fantastic. So um, those again are found on our Living Miracles event page. And um, yeah, the, the May event is up. So the one coming up next week and the June event is also active already. And there's an early bird on that until the 15th of May. So if you're, if you're just certain that you're, you're loving these events and you want to come or you know that that works for your schedule, you can sign up now and get our early bird special on that. So stay tuned in another two weeks. We'll be back with LM Virtual.